Yes, we are. I think so. You ready? Okay, I see the recording has begun. It is now 7 uh, 36. Um, let's convene the, the meeting here. Good evening, fellow commissioners and the general public. My name is Mike Champness. I'm the chair of the Transportation Advisory Commission. Before I begin, please note that this meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the county website and on YouTube. To conduct this meeting wholly electronically and to effectuate both the emergency procedures authorized by new state legislation and FOIA, the Transportation Advisory Commission needs to make certain findings and determinations for the record. This is a bit cumbersome, so I ask you in advance for your patience. <clears throat> First, because each member of this commission is participating in this meeting from a separate location, let's verify that a quorum of members is participating and that each member's voice is clear, audible, and at an appropriate volume for all the other members. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. Mm -hmm. I'm asking that each commissioner, each commission member participating in this meeting to state your name and location from which you are participating when I mention your name. At large, who is Furley? I am present and I am participating from my home in scenic Clifton, Virginia. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, Braddock District, uh, Kevin Morris. From uh, Burke, Virginia. Fantastic. Uh, Greensville, uh, Mike Champness here from uh, McLean. Hunter Mill District, Kelly Westenhoff. Um, I'm here from Reston. Fantastic. Uh, Mason District, Roger Hoskin. Roger Hoskin, present in the heart of Mason District. Okay. Uh, Mount Vernon District, Pete Sitnick. Uh, Pete Sitnick, uh, Mount Vernon District in, in my residence. Uh, and that is located where? Ah, that's a good question. I, I, I actually, the last time I, out of habit, I said I lived in southern uh, Mount Vernon, but I'm now living in northern Mount Vernon. So uh, I do apologize for misleading. I had to reach out and, and say, oops. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, northern Mount Vernon. Okay. Uh, lead district, uh, Lexus Glenn. Lexus Glenn present in Alexandria. Thank you, Alexis. Uh, Providence District, Jeremy Hancock. Jeremy Hancock in Falls Church. Okay, thank you. Springfield District, Eric Thiel. Eric Thiel here in Fairfax Station, Springfield District. Okay, uh, Sully District, uh, David Skiles. Okay, and uh, Fairfax Area Disability Services Board, Mary Pauline Jones, who has actually told us previously she's not gonna be here. Uh, Mary Pauline, I assume you haven't uh, managed to make it in? No. Okay. At this point, I will pass the virtual gavel to Secretary Roger Hoskins so that it may be heard to make the requisite motions. Thank you. I accept the virtual gavel and I now recognize Commissioner Champman. Thank you. I move that we have determined that each member's vote can be adequately heard by each other member of the commission. It is so moved. You have heard the motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. That's Pete. Seconded by Commissioner Pete. Sicknick. Yes. Is there a discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, opposed say nay. Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Mr. Chairman, the motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. I next move that the state of emergency <clears throat> caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for this commission to physically assemble and unsafe for the public to physically attend any such meeting. I further move that this commission may conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated audio conferencing line and that the public may access this meeting by WebEx online platform or by calling 1415-655-0001 or 1-844-2020. Toll free. Entering the access code 173-854-0103. The phone number for ADA is 711. Access information is also available at the TAC website. It is so moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, that's that. Uh, Braddock. Yep. Braddock. Okay, Kevin. Uh, the second is by Commissioner Morris. Morris. Mm -hmm. Is there a discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all of those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Any abstentions? Mr. Chairman, the motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Finally, I move that all of the matters on the agenda previously furnished and have posted on the TAC website 
are necessary for continuity and grant back spending government and or are statutorily required or necessary to continue operations in the discharge of the commission's lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities. You have all heard the motion. Is there a second? Second. Kevin, Commissioner Morris again. The sec it's a seconded by Commissioner Morris. Is there a discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all of those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Mr. Chairman, the motion is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. We will now start the tax business for the approved agenda. So, um, just very, uh, uh, very briefly, um, we will, uh, uh, we had, we had hoped to be able to talk about uh, Uber and Lyft this evening. We're not going to be able to. Uh, one, we have some scheduling issues uh, with, uh, uh, with that agenda item. But more importantly, we wanted to be able to uh, uh, provide attention to the preparation for the uh, active Fairfax presentation to the board uh, board of supervisors uh, transportation committee. Um, and so I uh, wanted to be able to as I say, give them the appropriate attention. Uh, but also, uh, because our working session was a little longer than planned last time, did not want to add any more items to the agenda here. And hopefully, uh, we can get out a little bit sooner. Um, and to that end, um, uh, uh, I would, would, would urge commissioners to the maximum extent possible, myself in particular included, uh, to be careful not to uh, go on too long at length and get to the point when you're making your points. Um, so that we can, uh, uh, so the conversation can uh, can move more smoothly. So I will try and uh, behave myself. Uh, ask others to do likewise. Um, and then with that, I would also just like to uh, welcome our uh, public and guests. I know we have a number of uh, uh, members from obviously the CDOT here, Mr. Bitsani, uh, of course, uh, uh, Brent Riddle and Calvin, as are often here. Um, uh, Mr. Chris Wells, Lauren Marr. Um, and uh, I think also, uh, where to go here, um, all of a sudden the names are dropping off. I'm cheating with the, uh, ah, there we go. Nicole, there you are. You put your camera on. That's what, that's what, that's what screwed me up there. So, uh, uh, sorry about that. Oh, Thank no you. worries. No worries. It's, it's more important to, to have the camera on. So with that, uh, uh, welcome, uh, glad again that you can, uh, you can participate with us. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, uh, move on to work on with our minutes and then we'll move on to the to the presentation here. So, uh, I think we have some, uh, uh, some minutes here. We have minutes from uh, uh, February and, uh, and April. Um, I think what I'd like to do then is uh, entertain a motion for approval of the minutes, either singly or in block, uh, depending on how the, the TAC would like to proceed. I move that we adopt uh, both minutes as written and submit it. Okay, there's Second. a motion by Commissioner Sitnik to uh, uh, adopt them uh, and block. Um, are there any uh, any discussion on the motion or the contents? Uh, uh, well, first, this is a motion to deal with them and block. Any uh, 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 discussion on the motion to deal with them and block? Do you need a second or not? Uh, you did, Mark, Kevin, I thought. Did All right, start? okay, good. Okay. Um, and so, uh, um, uh, uh, if there are no uh, no comments on the, the motion to deal with the men block, we'll move to a voice vote. All those in favor of uh, dealing with the minutes and block, please say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, say nay. Um, uh, 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 any abstentions? Uh, the motion is passed unanimously. We'll deal with the mo minutes and block. Um, and so now I um, would like to uh, entertain a motion to uh, uh, approve the minutes and block. So moved by okay. Braddock. All right. So let's see. So who who made the motion? Sorry, uh, Braddock. Okay. All right. And uh, uh, any seconds? I'll second it. All right, thank you very much. Okay, there's no motion on the table to uh, uh, approve the minutes and block. Is there any discussion on the minutes themselves? Hearing none, all those in favor of passing the minutes and block, please say aye. Aye. Okay, uh, opposed, say nay. Uh, hearing any abstentions? 
Okay, hearing none, the minutes are approved for February and April are approved and blocked. Um, okay, fantastic. Now we move on to the uh, the item at hand here. Um, and just a quick uh, 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 introduction. Obviously, we've spent uh, uh, some time here at the, the working session. Many of you were able to come to that uh, to look at the the acting uh, Fairfax plan. We talked briefly. Uh, we we talked briefly about some comments that we had provided from the previous meeting uh, that we can go over here a little bit uh, in a little bit. The focus here is on uh, getting the uh, uh, providing our advice to FCDOT as they take this presentation to the board of supervisors. Uh, we have to put together a draft motion uh, of support, which we'll talk about later. Obviously, uh, not to presume any outcomes, it is possible the board could decide, uh, the commission could decide uh, not to pursue it, a, 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 a motion at all, or a, a statement at all, a resolution at all, or uh, to, to modify it. We'll, we'll get to that point in the, in the conversation. Um, and so with that, what I'd like to do is, I think, uh, turn it over to Nicole or Chris to get things started. Um, look forward to picking up the conversation and uh, I'm helping push the ball over the goal line. Uh, sure. Uh, thanks, Mike. Thank you, uh, uh, commissioners. Um, so we did uh, have a, a good discussion on, on the vision and goals uh, part of the uh, Active Fairfax Transportation Plan at the work session. Uh, we will still need to come back to the TAC for the, uh, the systematic safety plan, as it was called, uh, but we might actually be calling it a safe streets plan now, uh, based on some input we, we received. So, um, for tonight, um, we our, our purpose is twofold. Uh, the first purpose is to follow up on, on the work session and any input you all have on the vision and goals or any questions actually that you would have for us. And then uh, second uh, purpose tonight is uh, because of time uh, during the work session, we did not get to the uh, to the uh, concerns that have been raised by some of the commissioners about uh, maintenance of traffic, uh, enforcement, uh, and, and some other um, um, hot button issues uh, on pedestrian and bicycle um, safety. And so we want to just have a pretty much an open discussion tonight about some of those things. We also had a couple follow up emails from. Uh, from uh, uh, Commissioner Alexis and Commissioner Kelly, so um, uh, we just really want to have a, have a conversation on that. But before we move into that, uh, uh, we'd like to go ahead and wrap up the uh, the vision and goals for Active Fairfax. And uh, if you have any follow up questions or any, any anything you need from us, and then you can uh, consider your your uh, motion. Okay. Uh, well, I think what we'll do is we'll delay the motion until after the presentation and discussion. One of the things I wanted to talk about is um, obviously the, the the safety piece that recognize that uh, uh, the uh, uh, safety plan is is not ready to proceed, um, and then uh, um, the uh, 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 and and some of the issues we raised were sort of safety related. So um, I'd like to sort of have a bit of a discussion about that uh, because part of what the Proposed resolution shows, and I'm sure you've seen it. We welcome obviously your comments on it, and make sure, if no other reason, make sure it's accurate. Um, is to uh, uh, understand what some of the uh, what some of those next steps are regarding safety and things like that. Um, so for the commissioners, um, because we're not focused on the safety piece here, um, I think it's we we shouldn't be judging this product very closely on the safety scale. But I know how important that is is to folks. So with that, um, I'll, I'll step back. Uh, Chris, if there's some comments you'd like to make or open to yeah, commissioners yeah. to make any comments about the, uh, uh, the presentation from last. Sure, if, if, if you don't mind, let me just go ahead and sure. respond now that, now that I understand how you want, how you want to uh, uh, have this go. And then absolutely, then you guys can, can run the show and we, we can talk about things. So um, mm -hmm. the systematic safety plan is really um, a far reaching vision uh, a decades long vision of, of how the how the county uh, can uh, improve its safety. So it's still an internal working document. Tom hasn't even seen a draft yet on it. Uh, we, uh, Nicole and I and, and my um, my uh, section chief have met on it and we've we've uh, you know had a had a good internal discussion about you know hey these are great ideas but some of them have you know, budget implications and uh, we, we, we need to balance um, uh, 
strong technical staff recommendations with really what's the best um, uh, the best way to deliver that to, to the Board of Supervisors, the best way to, to put it in the right context that uh, we certainly don't want to uh, imply that we have to do, you know, 40 different things all at once uh, because we know we can't do 40 different things all at once. So we, we really want to set up a framework um, of, of uh, you know, what are the proper, what's the proper way to implement um, some of these steps. What's 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 the first step? What's the second step? What's the third step? You know, to create a narrative of of you know how we improve safety. And the board, of course, is interested in improving safety, but the board is responsible for the county's budget, and so that's <laughs> that's that's certainly the reality of uh, of uh, how we how we um, uh, strike this uh, information distribution balance. And so we actually uh, Nicole is. Uh, uh, reached out to Tom's scheduler to set up a meeting with Tom because that's actually Tom's skill set is is navigating <laughs> the the uh, the whole county framework, the context of how we how we do things. So uh, we uh, so with that that's that's where we're headed with that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really it's it's really um, not um, it, it's a roadmap. I think that's maybe the best way to say it. It's it, it's a roadmap for you know. Um, if you know, if 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 we had a, if we had a lighting plan, uh, if if we controlled our streets, you know, these are these are big issues, and, and but that it's not just big issues; it's other smaller issues. So it's really a roadmap, and we need to break that down into, uh, you know, again, what would be the the uh, immediate steps, what would be the near term steps, what would take, um, you know, a, a lot of uh, effort over time. Uh, policy buy-in, so on and so forth. So that's what that's where that we're where we're looking to go with that. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to lay out that um, that that idea, that framework of okay. what it what it is, and and uh, where where we want to head with it. But the challenge of how we um, how we deliver this information uh, to in a positive way, in a, in a non-critical way. In a, <laughs> um, a non toxic way, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a lot of challenges that, that, you know, we all, you know, we readily admit, I mean, I've, I've certainly worked with the TAC. Yeah, Tom as well over many, many years on, on many of these issues and, and, you know, unfortunately not, not, uh, there's no overnight solutions for, for lots of them. So, uh, so with that being said, that's, that's, um, uh, so some of the things that we may talk about tonight might be. Um, uh, smaller than the systematic safety plan elements. Uh, some of them might be spot on, like maintenance. You know, mm -hmm. we've heard yeah. maintenance loud and clear in our community conversations. So, um, so anyway, that it will probably be a mix. So, uh, we'll okay. come back to the TAC with the the, the working document uh, on on uh, where we want to make the recommendations to the board. But so with that, I just want to let everybody know that. And then we can go over. I would suggest that um, the, the position paper that you all had, uh, mm -hmm. uh, PowerPoint, <laughs> whatever it was. Hey, the, can uh, I ask you a question on the systemic piece sure. first. Um, what I um, maybe help clarify what what is it going to look like? You mentioned like a maintenance piece, so you're not thinking of like this corner is an issue, a systemic issue, but these are the these are the types of issues that you would consider as something that's a systemic issue. Sorry. Absolutely. That's a, that's a that's a great question. It's it's uh, it's not this corner, but it's what's wrong with this corner that might be wrong with a thousand other corners. Uh, so uh, right right now, it's a it's a list of like forty or fifty uh, bullet points, so to speak. It'll become a report. So this this these forty or fifty bullet points will be put into a report format again with a narrative. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 really getting at you know. A, a, a lot of these, a lot of these issues that that you all have probably talked about, that many of us have talked about over over the years, speed limits, maintenance, um, enforcement, um, you know, best practices. Uh, it's not it, it's not at all intended to be, you know, uh, this is a dangerous corner. But again, what's uh, why why are these places dangerous, and is there um, um, a, re, um, a common Commonality to to some of these things that well, if we had better lighting, for instance, or if we had more crosswalks, for instance, then 
these solutions uh, would be set as a policy um, uh, standard that that uh, we would then pursue to improve safety. All right. Um, no, appreciate the uh, um, you know the uh, you know placing this in in, in perspective. Um, certainly, uh, and in fact, one I think it's really more better term for a question. Um, the system safety plan is that part of phase two? I think is is that sort of where that's done, or how does that fit in with sort of the phase one, phase two kind of stuff? That's a great question. So we had uh, been planning on having it as one of our key deliverables for phase one, and I think I think we still are, but mm -hmm. uh, we haven't talked with Tom about this or or, yeah. uh, or uh, how it all fits in. I don't think it has to be part of phase one. I think it could also um, ease into phase two uh, if it needs more time, for instance. So uh, we really um, uh, it, it's an important policy statement. Uh, all of these things are important policy mm -hmm. statements, but um, we we certainly uh, need to be uh, respectful of the the budget environment and the previous policy discussions that the board has had. And so mm -hmm. we're just we're we're revisiting some of these things because we've heard this uh, and again from mm -hmm. from board from board members from from the public, and so um, it it. Uh, we're we're not funded for phase two yet. Our strategy is to um, maybe use some existing uh, FCDOT funding to continue some some work tasks to bridge us into uh, carryover, where we're going to officially ask again for the phase two funding. And so, uh, schedule wise, right now we're uh, hoping to bring the, um, the the safety element to the board transportation committee at the end of June. Uh, we were, we were even thinking that July would be okay, but I just looked at the calendar and I, again, I haven't asked Tom about this, but according to the mm -hmm. website, there, there is not a July, uh, board transportation <laughs> committee and, and there's not an, there's not an August 1. So yeah. we're, probably, we're probably still going to bring the safety element to the board transportation committee at mm -hmm. the, end of, the end of June and then, uh, uh, come back to the board, uh, probably after the August break in, in September. So. It's in between phase one and phase two is uh, maybe okay. a better way to put it. All right, so phase one A perhaps, I guess. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, well, as you mentioned, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of commissioners did have some some questions. I know you've got those. And I know that we did not get into much detail on the, uh, uh, the uh, presentation we put together, which also was the product of the two commissioners that sent the questions. So detect a pattern here. Um, would you like to maybe respond to the brief or the questions? In fact, I will ask uh, Commissioner uh, Westenhoff and uh, Commissioner Glenn, uh, uh, which would you prefer to, uh, to, to talk about first, if you have a preference? No preference, I'll let Alex lead. I'll let, I'll let okay. Alexis lead, sorry about that. Alex. Okay. No worries. I don't have a preference. Um, I'm curious to hear more about, I guess, the policy angle um, with all the givens of not being funded, not sure what the next steps might be, you know, where you hope to go policy wise and um, I guess just what that looks like. So this is specifically to Active Fairfax? Yes. Uh, I mean, the pol the county can say we change this policy or we we take the stance on this issue and we this is how we want you know this item to be implemented. Um, you know, and that can have it doesn't necessarily change things right away, but then you've got to interact with Fdot, you've got to interact with NVTA, with all these other entities, all these other rules. Um, I'm just trying to understand, you know, when, if the county says, we're going to take this policy stance on this approach to safety, how that, you know, looks like if the board adopts it and then down the line, how you how that works out when you're interacting with other, all the other agencies and all the other funding mechanisms that, um, 
that the county has to leverage to actually implement. Sure. So um, again, this I know this is a little confusing, and we're mixing um, we're mixing some different things. So again, the active Fairfax transportation plan is ultimately a comprehensive plan change, and, and it's intended to uh, serve as an umbrella for um, a, a bunch of other policy things, policy uh, actions, and, and techniques that that staff has already been been working on over the years, and so. You know, we don't have the answers yet tonight about not only those specific elements, but, uh, you know, what what uh, strategies might be there, what timelines might be there for uh, for funding. However, there in in the in the position of uh, PowerPoint that, that you guys sent out. Um, one of the things you talked about was um, maintenance of traffic during construction and, you know, that that's already county policy. That's that's been county policy since Tony Griffin was the county executive in 2004, and the county policy is very clear on that that we should be doing that. And the reality is we don't do a good job of that. And so that's the kind of thing that we could, we could certainly uh, discuss uh, tonight, and and does not need to wait for the active Fairfax transportation plan to to. Uh, have the board endorse a new policy because that's already our policy. It's just something that uh, is been challenging for folks to get right over the years. And, and uh, you know, we're prepared to discuss, you know, some, maybe some strategies in, in the immediate term to um, to um, get get folks' attention uh, uh, re refocused on stuff like that. So, uh, also, you mentioned enforcement. You know, that's not. Uh, a long term policy goal that the active Fairfax transportation plan um, influences. That's something that the board members could talk to the brand new chief of police about uh, when in their meet and greet. So, um, I, I, you know, I, I'm just sort of reacting to the. To some of the things you all uh, brought up in that uh, that are not uh, necessarily new, but the fact that you brought them up means that. We're also not doing them um, to your satisfaction. Uh, so uh, I, I just want to make sure we segment things that, you know, should we have a lighting policy? Now, that's a policy item that the board has already talked about, but is probably something that we would be recommending in the active Fairfax plan. But some of these other items are problems that the policy is already out there on and you know how do, how do we do a better job uh, today with with these problems so chris this is kelly um so that raises a, a question for me that um if something is there's already a policy and it's not being done to the satisfaction of whoever it is that it's a, that it's bothering um does that mean that the active transportation plan should have more ramped up guidance or more specific guidance or should be seeking more specific uh, penalties? I, I don't know how specific it gets in terms of penalties and trying to um, get different, you know, construction companies or developers or whoever should comply. And related to that, the bike parking guidelines, shouldn't they come under a long term active transportation plan since bike parking is an in, in integral part of any kind of active transportation that's using micro mobility. Maybe I can take that one, Chris. Uh, so on bike parking, we currently work with developers and they're they're pretty good about implementing the bike parking guidelines. They're not um, through proffers mostly. So the the guidelines don't have a full set of teeth yet, but I have a couple of teeth. <laughs> so we have pretty good results with the more current development. Um, any development that's going in right now, probably that's under construction or has been recently constructed. Maybe before we started this new process, but um, um, what we have worked through with the developers in the past 2 years, uh, we have seen pretty good results in getting pretty close of. Uh, what we would like to see, and it's um, the preference usually have the caveat that it has to be approved by the Fairfax County bicycle program manager. So there's a lot of uh, internal kind of 
coordination one-on-one -on -one with the architects that is not necessarily on paper that happens and um, the results have been good. Um, however, we would like to provide a full set of teeth and updated guidelines. They are now outdated a little bit as well. Um, we know AASHTO is developing new bicycle guidelines um, and we would like to make it uh, part of the comprehensive plan, part of the, you know, building or zoning codes or whatever zone, um, codes are, um, are uh, applying to these developments. Uh, so there's still a bit of work left and, and an updated you know, a set of guidelines is still needed and that will be part of active fairfax um, and and the PF and the public facility manual um, is waiting for us to to make the update they already included a reference to the current guidelines um, in in the manual so that gave it a little bit of teeth um, but there are no penalties for developers that didn't implement it um, in the past because they were not required to. Does that make sense? And it, and it raises the question because it's not just developers from the past. I mean, well, I guess it, at some point someone developed all the strip malls that are still hanging around. They have no bike parking, but those developers are probably long gone or rolled into something else. So we're not talking about things that just was were built five years ago, but we're talking about things that were or approved five years ago, but were approved, you know, 15 years ago, if there was even any kind of approval process back then, much less, you know, bike parking guidelines. So how do you address that reaching back into the past? Do you just wait until new development comes or new permits? And how does that, and, and how does something like an active transportation plan um, provide for that eventuality? Sure. So. Um... You know, uh, we again we need to uh, help help everybody understand what the Hector Fairfax plan can and and cannot do. Many you know the county is uh, an octopus, right? With, with many 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 arms. I don't know how many arms an octopus has, but uh, county's got more of them. Uh, and so uh, the land development process is its own its own unique. Uh, and, uh, um, and and it's it's really driven uh, by Virginia law. Um, it's um, there's a specific the, sub, the subdivision ordinance and the zoning ordinance uh, both have its roots in um, what Virginia uh, allows jurisdictions to do with developments. And as as you you all have probably heard before, you know Virginia is a Dillon rule state, which means the jurisdictions only. Can do what Virginia says we can do, and it's also a land rights state. That the uh, the uh, uh, um, uh, premise is that uh, landowners uh, have uh, some rights, if not uh, a lot of rights, to um, uh, develop their property. So I, I, I don't think it's it's uh, expected that the active Fairfax transportation plan is going to be able to change the development process, but on this issue of bicycle parking. <laughs> Excuse me. That's absolutely an issue that's that is near and dear to our heart. But uh, specifically to answer your, your question, um, there's very little that the county can do uh, looking backwards uh, to stuff that's already been built and approved in this county. Uh, we can't we can't go in and you know make them plant trees. We can't go in and make them have more parking spaces, and 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 we can't make them. You know, add, add bicycle parking. What leverage we do have is when they come to the county to do business, and, and any time that they come to the county to do some sort of business, some sort of business, whether it's uh, changing their signs or or up to you know a full blown rezoning, then that's our opportunity to interact with them and to uh, bring them into um, where we want them to be in in, in you know the year twenty twenty one. So. Unfortunately, so this, it, 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 well, this is Tom. Can can you hear yeah. me? Yes, Tom, we can. Okay, I, just to kind of um, reemphasize that point that Chris made. Um, there, there really is no. The county has no tools to go back. Um, so what happened? You know, if a if it a new shopping center was developed in 1990. And they didn't put in bike parking. We we don't have any tools other than 
a it might be a good idea if you uh, you know your customers might like to to have bike parking um and and you know would you consider it but we don't have any any kind of enforcement ability to to go back in time however going forward as chris said um, as people come through the rezoning process, I think we've been pretty uh, successful recently in trying to get um, proffers for bike parking um, by having um, updated guidance in the comprehensive plan um, and the bike parking standards that the board adopted a couple of years ago. That's been um, helpful in terms of in things going forward, but we just don't have the tools to go backwards other than just uh, you know, goodwill of of whoever the property owner might be, um, but that is something that um, we want to make sure because this um, active Fairfax plan will become part of the comprehensive plan. It will be part of um, requirements for uh, new development as it goes forward. And as as Chris said, that doesn't just apply to bike parking; it applies to to anything that we might want to standards change. And we can always enforce them going forward, but we don't have any tools to go back, whether they're bike parking or trees or benches or um, even building building cone standards. We don't have the ability to go back and ask somebody to retrofit their building to 2021 standards if it was built in 1970. We, that doesn't exist in Virginia. Is there, this is Alexis. It, does the county have the ability or interest? I mean, does the board of supervisors, if, if we wanted to ask them um, about this, like to offer maybe incentives? Um, for example, when these older properties come, you know, like Chris said, come to the county for a sign um, permit or some other permit to update some sort of, you know, a smaller permit to update some sort of part of their infrastructure. Like they're redeveloping uh, one of their um, one of the spaces that they lease, you know, can the county say, okay, you know, we'll waive this permit fee if you plant some trees or add some bike parking? Um, you know, are are there, there kind of levers like that 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 we could that that the county or the board of supervisors could look at um, versus you know the the stick side of things where we're gonna <laughs> hurt you know we're gonna you know if you don't do this you're gonna get fined or you're gonna get in trouble. Carrots. Yes. I think the answer to your question, Alexis, is yes. Um, the county could offer incentives. For example, a few years ago, and maybe it's been more than a few now. Um, maybe it's been 20 years ago. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but the county used to have a program. Um, it was for uh, building facades, and so the build the county provided grants to businesses to upgrade their building facades. And and I don't remember what the dollar figure it was. It might have been. $10,000 or something. It wasn't like huge, huge hundreds of thousands of dollars, but, but there was a program that the county wanted um, businesses to upgrade their facades. And so there was a program for a number of years where um, there was a gr grants were offered to businesses to allow them to upgrade. So theoretically, yes, the county could offer a, a grant program to incentivize um, putting in bike parking, for example or putting in other you know bike facilities or signage or something like that so so that wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility but um the hammer or the you know the the stick approach um we we really don't have that ability to do that you know, one one quick observation i'll make alexis knowing your interest in in in, in policies and that obviously uh, uh with this being part of the comprehensive plan, and that makes perfect sense, you know, that this would be part of that. But there might be other uh, 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 regulations or rules or or uh, um, activities that being aware of what we're trying to do here allows us and really a CDOT to look at other places where there might be some uh, uh, some influence to bear to to change some other uh, uh, regulations or something like that. In, in other areas, and the comprehensive plan is pretty comprehensive, so that might be all we need. But certainly, if if our uh, research takes us to a place where it looks like there's additional uh, uh, guidance that needs to be issued, we can certainly talk about that and, and conceivably encourage the board of supervisors to consider it. Sorry, 
So, Mr. Chairman, just um, going yes. forward, I know there was a PowerPoint that was put together with some um, recommendations or some thoughts, and we can certainly um, walk through that if if you all would like and, and provide some comments and feedback on that, if that would be helpful. I, I, I would like to actually, yes, if, if, we're, if that's possible, do we need to, uh, can we pull that up or do we need to? Uh... I, I found it, I pulled it up and I, I rotated my laptop around so I get a bit. Better Wi-Fi signal. Web WebEx is notorious Perfect. for uh, taking bandwidth. And I wanted to go ahead and uh, uh, mention one other thing. Uh, unfortunately, Nicole uh, has to go at eight thirty tonight. So uh, okay. Tom and Lauren and and I will be here. Uh, but if there's anything the commissioners uh, in particular um, want to discuss with Nicole, something about you know, bicycle parking, for instance, is, is she knows more about it than I do. If there's something uh, specifically bicycle program related, if we could get to that first. Uh, Understand. Uh, I'll I'll ask real quick about, about and, oh, uh, yeah go go ahead. Sorry, Chris, your, your audio broke up. I thought you were done speaking. Um. I I'll just ask about bike parking then real quick um, while while we have Nicole um, mm -hmm. without without the the carrots or sticks that the county has to leverage at uh, some of these older um, commercial developments. What about just the the clout of the county asking? Um, you know, I I've reached out to multiple property managers in my community where I where I bike regularly to shop, um, and you know I don't get anywhere. I don't get any kind of response. Um, but, um, you know, maybe, um, someone with a Fairfax county gov email address, um, reaching out to them might, might get their attention of, of just asking, saying, Hey, we've heard this feedback. Could you please. Consider. So, if you had cases where, uh, we have worked with private shop with, uh, property owners, particularly larger shopping centers, um, usually coordination with the chamber of commerce. So they may be a good place to start as well. I think their cloud is maybe bigger than mine. Um, so they have a good relationship with a, with a lot of the, uh, particularly um, the larger um, um, developers or property owners that are part of their their group. Uh, so for example, in Springfield, we have worked with a, the one of the smaller strip mall centers there on um, uh, at least investigating the possibility of putting bike parking and walking around and, and identifying good locations and educating them about um you know the the style of bike parking and the cost of it I mean, bike parking only costs a few hundred dollars so um i'm not quite sure if that's the best county fund spend because our own needs and on our public properties is huge i think the park authority did a study of their bike parking needs and it was over a hundred thousand dollars because we haven't implemented um consistently uh, bike parking um, at our facilities because many of them were planned beforehand and now need to be retrofitted. So most of our funds are going towards that. There used to be a um, just a bike parking giveaway that Charlie Strong um, did as a pilot a few years ago, where they would just provide free bike parking to businesses that ask for it. Um, and that's maybe a possibility in the future again as well uh, once we have you know the funding to to take care of the the public facilities um and then also work with the private facilities but you know if there's always a case where uh, someone is open to it um i have reached out to developers before that installed bike parking incorrectly so they had the right racks but they were not installed correctly and that is a little bit more successful because it's easy for them to just go out and adjust but um, it doesn't always work either, so it, it right. depends on case by case, but we, we have um, tried in the community. It, it's good for the, uh, you know, the, the developers and the shopping center owners uh, or the property owners to hear from the community. Um, and then, you know, the supervisor's office may be also having some clout. Um, uh, but yeah, and the Chamber of Commerce is, is a good place to start as well. No, that's a good idea. And I wasn't suggesting that the that the county should should pay for for bike parking for these commercial properties at all. I, I definitely know that there's a, a need and a lack of parking at county facilities still, including parks, which was the other thing I was going to bring up that I know that you all are aware of and in, in looking at that. So, so thank and, you. Yeah, and, 
In fact, in let, work, let me yeah. let me just go ahead and add uh, real quick. Uh, we're not allowed to use taxpayer money on on private property, so that's actually not not uh, something that we should be doing. And there's even a fine line for us to ask anything. I mean, I, I I was sitting here listening to this, and I was thinking, well, you know, many of you all represent supervisors. Uh, they probably have more clout than staff, but um, there's a there's always a concern with. Um, and I, I don't remember the correct legal term, but it, an implied um, zoning or quid, quid pro quo, quid pro quo, where if, if the county were to ask something and the developer does something, then the, the developer comes back for the next rezoning and you know expects something in return. So it's um, I actually like Nicole's suggestion of a chamber of commerce, or uh, you know, if there's a large HOA surrounding a shopping center, they could make the point that look, we have you know lots of customers for your for your business. Uh, so that's uh, I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. Uh, even even simple simply talking to people sometimes can have uh, uh, legal legal implications. Mm -hmm. I had a quick question about the, uh, the bike parking, sort of backing up a little bit. Um, obviously, plenty of places that uh, um, we, we sort of wish there was bike parking. Is there does, is there kind of a strategy for where it sort of tries to focus? You know, does it try and focus on certain areas to maybe try and fix a bike problem area in one area, or is it kind of wherever there's an opportunity, you try and take advantage of it, where you have a developer that wants to do it, or you've got a chamber of commerce that's, that's supportive of things like that. How do you prioritize where you actually try and do these things, or is it just sort of all with the uh, um, policies and things like that, try to shape them more effectively for the future? So currently, uh, development, of course, we work with all developers that come yeah. across our desk. Um, mm -hmm. Our own, Bike parking program focuses on um, public facilities and currently we're working with the neighborhood community services facilities. Mm -hmm. So they, they told us where, where they um, prioritized uh, their parking. So we just had a, a big round of installations, I think over 25 racks at um, uh, six or nine uh, uh, facilities that didn't have any bike parking before. So they, they have a huge need and that's probably something we will continue to do. Until um, uh, those centers have the bike parking, that's of course from the equity perspective an important um, goal. Parks does their own recs, so they did their own analysis and they applied for a grant, which I think they received and they're starting to implement. So um, we as FCDOT do not long, no longer install bike racks at parks um, because they have their own program. So that's great, um, okay. but we're also starting to work a little bit closer with schools and um we also install their own bike parking and they're also um you know basically like a developer they need to send their plans to FCDT for review and then we work with them on the bike parking and particular institutions don't have specific recommendations in the bike parking guidelines so it just says coordinate with FCDT on on that so we have that close coordination okay okay appreciate it Like, can I can I jump in here? She's about yes, to leave. Um, uh, at the working session, Nicole, I think I shared some of my concerns about, especially where the uh, we have no grade separation and the automobile and the bicycle are sharing the road. Uh, this afternoon, I had to go to Arlington for a little league game and eastbound on Braddock, um, where there was plenty of traffic. I found myself. Um, sharing the lane with the with the bicyclist. Uh, now he was, you know, we were getting uncomfortably close. And I, you know, I guess maybe my only option was to to go into the uh the passing lane. But um again, could he could he actually if he chose on Braddock Road be in the middle of the lane if, if he wants rather than over to the side of the lane? The cyclists are supposed to ride as far to the right as practicable, which is um, a pretty gray definition of how far that's supposed to be. Uh, on wider roads that have more than two lanes or a wide lane, it really is pretty far to the right where um, as long as there's no gravel or obstacles in the way, so they, the driver and the cyclist should be comfortably sharing uh, those travel lanes. The roads that are more narrow, 
um, cyclists are actually encouraged to take the lane and be closer to the center so that the driver passes crossing across a double yellow line into the other travel lane and then passes back. And that's um, a relatively new Virginia state law that um, allows that passing maneuver. And that's the safest for uh, both participants because, and especially the cyclists, because if they're too close to the right and the driver passes too close, it puts both of them at risk of a crash. Okay, I, I would just say specifically then um, for a secondary road like Braddock Road, um, it, it's just not feasible to share, like to me, uh, to share a lane with a with a bicyclist. Um, I just think it's a lose lose for both the the driver and and the bicyclist. It's just too unsafe of a situation. So I just I wanted to make that specific observation and and one other. Um, Again, when I got to Arlington and the lane was backed up, uh, and then you know, you're waiting to make a right turn, you know, there's just this uncertainty. Okay, if if what happens if I make it? If I get into that lane too soon? If I committed a violation? Even if there are no bicyclists in the lane, um, I, I think you know that's going to have to be communicated somehow. Exactly. When the motorists can uh, enter into the lane, because I also saw at various intersections in Arlington where the where the intersection comes up, the turn lane is not marked the same at every intersection. Sometimes it just seems to end. Sometimes there's dots where I think then it's okay to get in the lane. But I think there's a lot of work to be done on that, and I just wanted to leave that with you before you go. Yeah, before I go, I can put a link in the chat. It's, uh, I'm not sure if you have seen the uh, brochure we developed that's called um, uh, the uh, Guide to Bicycle Lanes for Drivers in Fairfax County that explains a little bit how to do right turns if a bike lane is present, uh, particularly if there's no right turn lane, because it has been very confusing um, even for internal staff and how to do that correctly. And uh, yes, yeah, so it should be a puppy track, like the, the dotted uh, lane leading up. A solid line shouldn't be crossed, um, but if there's a pup, except for parking, but to make a turn where the puppy track is, the driver's actually supposed to merge into the bike lane and then turn right. And that is to um, avoid that right hook maneuver. But I will post the chat, uh, the link in the chat so I can um, see the for sure. The uh, kind of person would not use the chat, so if you could uh, email it to uh, to Calvin, you can send yeah, it to I was going to yeah, say, okay, sure. preferable. send it to Calvin. It's too good. I've been listening. <laughs> okay, well then. Thank you, Thank Nicole. You. Yes, thanks, Kevin. Um, I think uh, uh, as Nicole does that, um, we need to to to, to let her uh, let her leave. <laughs> Unless there are any other quick questions here, then I would like to move on to the uh, to the presentation there. Uh, any last quick questions for Nicole before she uh, departs? Nicole, thank you so much for participating with us uh, uh, and, uh, and answering the questions. We really appreciate it. Um, wish you luck at the board of supervisors uh, uh, in uh, seven days, I guess. Um, and I look forward to uh, uh, hearing from you again and working further as you go forward. So thank you so much. Thank you, Brad. Okay. Okay. All so, right. Cal Calvin, can you give me? Uh, Permission to share. Uh, yes, just a second. Thank you. Okay, so what do I do? There it is. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see uh, the presentation now. Uh, the way WebEx does things, so it, it changes my screen. <laughs> so I can see I'll it. Figure, I'll figure it out. Um, so uh, this was the document you guys had sent to Calvin, and he had sent to us. Uh, so um, maybe it would just be helpful if we go through it and let you all speak to it, and then we can have a discussion on each of these items. Uh, so the topics were, as as mentioned previously, what what I call MOT, and I'm sorry I use an acronym. That's maintenance of traffic uh, through construction. Uh, the TAC's requests for data, uh, how we have relationships with public private spaces, 
and then uh, in questions about enforcement. So, um, and <laughs> since, since you all prepared this, Kelly sent us uh, um, uh, concerns about the uh, Wheelie Avenue um, crossing of the W and D, uh, and luckily we were able to make uh, a, a preliminary improvement on that. And I'm still hoping to get some folks together to maybe make that even better. Um, so this is this this is what you guys sent. Um, and I'll actually this is uh, you know this this is the I guess this is what the good the good the bad and the ugly the old the old Clint Eastwood movie. So uh, you know this is the kind of stuff that goes on out there, and, and unfortunately you know we're 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 aware of this, uh, and it, it it you know when when folks bring it to our attention and, and when we can reach out to. Uh, People who are in charge of this, uh, often we can get it fixed, but, you know, it, unfortunately, you know, the reality is it, it shouldn't have to be that way. Um, uh, your point was that if this was a road project, uh, it, there should be a suitable detour. Unfortunately, the, the, the correct answer is it, it's the same for an existing walkway or trail that there um, are two documents that govern this. Uh, the Virginia work zone protection manual and the International Building Code. And they are both absolutely clear that when there is an existing sidewalk or trail, that there's supposed to be a temporary uh, facility or a detour or something in place. Um, one of them, and I can't remember which, which one it is, actually goes a step further and says that even if there's a goat trail, a path, uh, a worn path that, um, Efforts should be made to provide an alternate for that as well. It's not a shall in engineering term, but it's a should. So uh, here are pictures that you all sent us of good examples. Uh, in my experience, I rarely see good examples. Um, <laughs> sometimes, you know, there's legitimate reasons for this. There was a case in Tyson's on West Park Drive where they were digging underground right next to West Park Drive, you know, five stories underground to build a parking garage and, and you know, all their, you know, utilities and everything. So there's no way to do something like this unless you um, blocked one lane of West Park Drive, which uh, actually would have probably been a better alternative. Um, we've had good, we have had some good examples like this. I, in my opinion, uh, one of the better ones was when we uh, rebuilt Route 7 and the whole Silver Line construction in Tyson's. Uh, they tried really hard using gravel, uh, plywood with uh, uh, slip resistant tape and, and just simple silt fences, the, the little uh, two foot chain link uh, uh, fabric line fences to, to direct people around um, what, are, what were uh, temporary facilities. And, and even if it was gravel, it was still, you know, stable and, and um, traversable in, in bad weather. So uh, I think that's the last slide there. Okay, the re the, here's the recommendation um, that we should uh, uh, implement uh, a similar standard with requirements for detours, uh, that uh, detours be treated with the same planning and diligence. And I'm not as uh, up to date on the detour aspect. I know that when we've worked with VDOT, uh, as in our construction projects, uh, VDOT does do detours. And, and unfortunately, sometimes they're um, not very practical <laughs> if you're on foot, but they've met the letter of the law to, to uh, provide a detour. Uh, I am more familiar with this, you know, work zone specific maintenance of traffic issue. Uh, and then uh, it, it absolutely is an equity issue. Uh, it, it, should, um, it should be, it should be better. I mean, we, we see what our, our neighboring jurisdictions do in the district and in Arlington. And in the district, you know, there's the classic, you know, covered walkway with plywood, chain link fence kind of scenario. In Arlington, they'll, they'll use concrete jersey barriers to, to uh, block a travel lane or typically more so a parallel parking lane. You know, our, our jurisdiction doesn't have parallel parking as much to, to utilize as a temporary uh, facility. But uh, we know that there are ways that that, that that usually can be done. Again, sometimes there's extenuating circumstances that the only answer is a detour. 
But uh, this is something that we've that you know we will Tom and I will admit that uh, we've all struggled with that v, uh, we worked with VDOT and and uh, to the new uh, commissioners. And so, as you can educate and and discuss with your new board members, it's our mm -hmm. land our land development services um, uh, agency, whatever they are, department. Um, they're the ones that are. Uh, uh, task with uh, managing uh, construction activities, uh, in ensuring that developers are complying with site plans, and so on and so forth. So, you know, our role in transportation clearly, we're the um, staff who are the advocates for for pedestrian and bicycle issues. Uh, but in this case of the the, the fire station on Wheelie, uh, you know, the only power that I have is to ask everybody to come meet in the field and bring together the people who are building the fire station, the people who are responsible for uh, approving the, the MOT, which is land development services, VDOT, who they had, they had all previously reached out to about, uh, you know, the crosswalk issue. And, and so um, part of my intent of, in this discussion tonight is to uh, certainly help you all understand that, um, uh, again, if you have a problem with something, um, uh, there are, there might possibly be another county agency who, um, who's responsible for it, and and maybe they just, they just don't realize the importance of this. And and again, um, you know, as as we uh, talked about this tonight, uh, I I have a a PDF of a, a memo that Tony Griffin wrote in in two thousand four, laying out that. The requirements of the Virginia Work Zone Protection Manual and the International Building Code, uh, but um, maybe we need to um, remind people uh, with the current county executive and the current uh, director of LDS um, that this is, you know, this is not a a want. <laughs> this is a need. Uh, this is actually a need. so. With that, um, I wanted to review it and then uh, pass it on to everyone else for discussion. So uh, let me just jump in real quick. I, you know, Chris is exactly right. This is this is the law, and it's it's county policy as well. And so we do have to follow up, unfortunately, more often than we should, to um, to try and ad address these issues when they come to our attention. We do try and follow up and get some resolution of them. But this is one that we probably need to put more emphasis on. And to spend some time with uh, land development services, in the case of the fire station, it was public works, um, and make sure that they understand what these requirements are and that they're following them. And so, yes, um, this is an area where we agree that more emphasis needs to be um, put on uh, addressing this up front so that we're not having to run around and try and make adjustments after the fact and after it wasn't done correctly. Thanks, Tom. That, that that makes perfect sense, and you know certainly some expectation of uh, you know accountability. Um, you know, hopefully, yes, you're able to get ahead of it. Everybody does it. There's never any issues there. Uh, it's certainly not something that you would dial 911 for if you found this law being violated. But you know, some kind of mechanism there. So uh, appreciate the recognition there, and, and that, that certainly is an important step. I have a quick question. This is Alexis. Is there a system of, you know, when I report a pothole to VDOT, I get a, a request number. Um, they have a certain amount of time. They have to follow up on it. You know, there's a whole little process in place. Is there anything like that with the land development services or, or other county agencies for this sort of uh, reporting of an, an incident or um, an issue like a 311? Yeah, that, that's a great question and, and a comment that we've actually had in the active Fairfax outreach that, you know, there really needs for, for maintenance is where that came up with, you know, there should be a central number. Um, and it's funny when Mike, Mike said that about 911, uh, and it's not funny, but, uh, I, there was literally a case where there was a construction project on route 1 and they had put a chain link fence around a bus stop on route 1 and. 
it was a bus stop. And so people were standing in the road and Supervisor Highland had to send the motorcycle police down there to tell the construction guys to move their fence. And, you know, what do you do? Mo motorcycle, motorcycle police show up and tell you to do something, you're, you're going to do it. But that's, <laughs> that's not, you know, that's a, that's a uh, extreme example of, um, of how this problem is, is really um, not clear cut. And so, um, so uh, we, Tom and I asked about this, uh, talked about this, and, and we think there is a central number for complaints to the county, uh, but we probably that is probably a, an idea that's worth pursuing for uh, something that uh, addresses maintenance and, and these type of issues. But go ahead, Tom. So, so LDS does have a number for reporting violations. And so we'll get that number and we'll circulate that to the TAC so that you have that. Um, so if, if you see, you know, a violation of building code or, or something like that, they do have a complaint number. So we will circulate that um, to all of you. So for construction projects, if they haven't, if it's a county, if it's a private developer and they haven't done what they're supposed to do, you will be able to call this number and construction inspector will go out and, and deal with the issue. Um, if it's a VDOT project or um, if it's a public works project, then then we have to go through different channels, either through VDOT or through our Department of Public Works. But we'll start by um, sending you the number for LDS for complaints. And it's probably something we went through this years ago with bus shelters because Metro owned some, VDOT owned some, the county owned some. Nobody knew who to call when there was a problem. And so we now have a standard um, sticker that goes in bus shelters that says, if there's a problem with this shelter, um, call this number. And it's whoever owns the shelter and is responsible. So we may have to do that in some other cases as well. But um, in the short term, we can get you the LDS number for, um, for complaints. Hey, Tom, it's, it's Kevin. Um, you know, I get the, and I'm sure everybody does the, uh, the daily uh, updates. It seems like almost daily updates on I-66. And you look at how thorough they are and, and the days, the hours, and, and, and uh, what's the detour, well, the detour being for the road. But, I mean, is that a template that they could we su suggest that, you know, VDOT for any of their road projects um, and the county you know, look at that as an example of thoroughness and then to include that it wouldn't be much more to include the, the any trails that would be affected on, on these projects. It may be something that could be done on, on county um, road projects and, and VDOT road projects, but in order to implement that from private development, which I think is where a lot of these problems are occurring, um, we would have to engage with uh, land development services to see what the possibilities of that would be. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just think it's uh, it, it, it's an impressive example of when they want to be thorough, they 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 can. Um, so, I, they also have a big budget to be thorough for that project as well. Uh, yeah. All right. Point taken. <laughs> yes. I, I think the main issue I'm trying to I'm, I'm kind of noodling at is is just the public is the public perspective that it's really hard to know what who to contact when you encounter something right. Even in my own neighborhood a few weeks ago, with all the county connections that I know, with all the knowledge that I have of how VDOT works and how the county works and all all these other things, you know. A, a street sign got knocked down, a, a tree limb fell during a windstorm and a street sign got knocked down. And so I immediately thought this is a VDOT problem. So I submit it to VDOT. VDOT tells me, no, it's this problem. I go to that department. They say, no, it's this other department. And I go to that department and I ended up like on three different phone calls trying to fix a stupid street sign, you know, trying to get a street sign that was knocked down because it was a, it was the, the street sign was the you know the name the the road name sign not if it was a stop sign it was VDOT but if, since it was the street name sign it was this county department um, you know and you know I'm anyway what I'm getting at is that I I feel like there I wish there could be a a way for all these departments to somehow come under some broader umbrella like a three one one 
where if a person encounters an issue, they don't have to, to call five different departments or spend a bunch of time on the internet researching this stuff or know something or know someone like me who's plugged into all this stuff because I get people who email me and call me all the time saying, how do I do this? Um, how do I fix this thing? And, you know, just have something a little more overarching where it's easy, just call 311 and in the back end, somehow <laughs> it gets routed to the right, um, you know, the right person to address it. Um, I know, that's, you know, this is way out of scope of Act Active Fairfax and, I'm, and I am going down a little bit of a rabbit hole right here. So, um, yeah, but, you know, but, from but a higher level, that's what I'm trying to get at. No, yeah. you, but you're not, you're not Alexis. I mean, we, again, this is, uh, you know, being one of those people that gets these phone calls uh, routed around the county and for citizens that have been bounced around, you know, over and over again, and, and they send them to me and it's a VDOT answer. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm certainly well aware of this point and, and the frustration and the, really the, you know, <laughs> loss of hope that people have when they just have a simple question like that. And, and it is complicated. And so, you know, maybe, maybe, a, a I don't know what the district uses 311, 511, uh, some, something like that it is um, uh, something that should be a recommendation of the active Fairfax clan. Um, Tom and I talked about this. We think there's a, you know, our, our, the prefixes of Fairfax County numbers are 324. We think there is a 324 Fairfax or 324 info number, but, but I'm not confident that if you called them uh, and hit them with five different things that they'd actually get it to the five different right places. So, um, uh, you know, uh, I, I, that's, I, I, again, I've worked for the county for 23 years and I am absolutely uh, aware of the hopelessness that people have when they are trying to find a question to something like a street sign or how to get a speed hump or request a speed limit change or a, a handicap parking sign, you know, all these things that seem straightforward, but aren't because of the complex relationship between us and, and VDOT and, and us and, and different agencies. So, um, you know, that's, this is a, a fair subject for discussion. So I, I would agree. I think this is this is an area where the county needs to do better. The county need that needs to do better. There is a phone number for uh, the general, you know, information and 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 all that. So we'll pass that on to you as well. Um, and I would agree with Chris that they may or may not be able to route you to the right place, but they may be able to get you closer to the right place. Um, in the case of street signs, it's our Department of Public Works Maintenance and, and uh, Stormwater Management Division that handles that, but the public wouldn't necessarily know that. So, I, point taken, um, there are some things we can do with Active Fairfax to deal with some of those things, but it's probably something that requires a larger discussion overall. Did Absolutely, and, and uh, I know we need to uh, continue on with the Active Fairfax plan here. Um, you know, put on so maybe, uh, you know, like frequently asked questions or something and put on the, the county website or something. Definitely out of scope. And Alexis, appreciate uh, you know your comment there. But this is an important issue because um, you look at the situation with uh, particularly the private area, uh, you know, private developer. Um, you know, with the uh, with the bus uh, uh, the bus stops, they exist. You know who it is. You can put a sticker on there, and that's who it is. You know, the problem we've got is that the, uh, the private developers, the folks probably who aren't going to be put on the sticker says call this number. Um, but uh, so I think that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, and uh, perhaps maybe as we get into phase two, uh, that might be a specific recommendation that we can make or perhaps work with uh, uh, Chris and Nicole and Laura and their team to uh, you know, help maybe frame something there that they might be able to make a recommendation to go forward. If I may. Uh, yes. Um, been listening and I've had a lot of good success calling VDOT on the uh, 804 road uh, because they, they do send you to like you, Tom, uh, or, and to FC dot on a lot of things. Uh, and I, I wouldn't mind sticking them for a little bit of the work, quite frankly, if, if they could add uh, not only saying, well, this is not VDOT, but this is say 
FC dot or call 324 uh, for other questions. It, it wouldn't be a bad one one stop place. So just just an idea. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I do want to move on a bit. Uh, we're trying to have a, a shorter meeting tonight if possible, mm -hmm. um, but we also need to make sure we go through this. Um, if there's unless there's any other burning questions, can we move on with the uh, the presentation? Maybe speed it up a little bit, you know. Although obviously, if the commissioner wants to talk about something, we'll, we'll take the time to do that. There it is. Oh, Re there Re Re recommendation number two: a three. What do you know? A three one one service. So. Done. Let's move, done. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> done Sorry, I should I should have uh, scrolled down to that slide. Uh, we got uh, a couple first minutes. Second, so we passed that already. So go ahead. <laughs> Okay, so uh, here, here's the, the next subject matter, you know, request for data. Um, uh, and this is a, this is a great question. Um, and and I, I, even though I've been doing this for the pedestrian safety aspect for 18 years, I don't know these answers. Um, the, so, the, in our county, uh, the police track the accident data, but they're not the keepers of the accident data. Uh, accident data is, um, um, Consolidated in, at the statewide level by the DMV, and there's a federal, uh, there's a whole federal uh, structure to how. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say accident. The, the correct word is crash. Um, crash data is is structured uh, by federal um, federal guidance, and it's uh, it's uh, collected by the DMV. Uh, and then our police are have access to that DMV data. Um, what's uh, what in my experience in the county, um, the Fairfax County Police bef before this was centralized in the DMV, the Fairfax County Police would know uh, the data for crashes that they respond to, but not the Virginia State Police. So if the Virginia State Police responded to a pedestrian fatality on an interstate. Um, that wasn't captured. So, uh, I believe it or not, I used to like track the Washington post, uh, to come up with an accurate, um, pedestrian fatality number, uh, for the county, because of course the interstates are in the county. So today that's all centralized uh, in the DMV. Um, uh, what, uh, we have been asking, uh, and I haven't had a chance to ask yet, but because of. Um, the, the recent increase in fatalities, um, we would like to have a better picture of our trends in the county. Uh, and in particular, there was a recent fatality at, at Route 50 and Graham Road. And, you know, when that was a, a, one of the original locations that we were aware of, you know, 20 years ago, and, and we've, we've done a lot of improvements in that uh, area there, but unfortunately there, there still seems to be, um, a trend there that is not uh, going away. So uh, we're, we're we were already planning on uh, working with the police on providing us some us uh, as staff some updated uh, information uh, that that we were interested in. Uh, but this this type of information here, you know, what how does it break down between uh, our minor arterials, major collectors? Uh, uh, so on and so forth that I don't think we've ever asked that specific question. What I can tell you that we do do, and I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet in a minute and open this up to discussion is, uh, the police have actually instituted something, uh, in the past year and a half, uh, where we actually, uh, have a, a, a working group that reviews fatalities. So, uh, we pull together us, uh, VDOT, the police. And the Northern Virginia uh, Transportation Commission, um, and uh, we are actually reviewing on a quarterly basis every pedestrian fatality um, to see what uh, lessons can be learned, either from a traffic engineering uh, perspective or a human factors perspective. Um, unfortunately, it takes some time. The police. Uh, Due to their uh, detective work that goes into um, uh, analyzing fatalities, um, that can take months. Uh, they need to wait for uh, toxicology reports and uh, things like that. So we're again we're reviewing them quarterly. Uh, so we do know some things. We haven't asked these questions about arterials, collectors, and so on. But you know we know 
for instance, that um, most of our fatalities are happening on our high speed, high volume roadways. And most of them are happening uh, not at a crosswalk. They're happening uh, at uh, uh, mid block or non crosswalk uh, locations. And that's the fatalities. Conversely, we know that most of our crashes are actually happening at signalized intersections in crosswalks. And so, you know, a, a, a high level conclusion is that, well, there's more pedestrians uh, at the intersections in the crosswalks. And unfortunately, there's uh, uh, the way traffic signals operate. There's opportunities for drivers to not uh, be paying attention or not be aware uh, of pedestrians. And so the crashes are higher at these signalized crosswalks, but they're not fatal, uh, nor are they causing serious injuries. The fatalities, the serious injuries are happening at these non intersectional locations, uh, often in the dark. So um, mm -hmm. I see the word equity. I mean, certainly we, in the active Fairfax plan, we actually have data on that and we will be reporting out on data uh, for that. We, you know, we've known for years uh, as I has, as staff has worked that we have uh, populations in our county that do not have the vehicle ownership um, that all of the county's populations have. And so those populations are more dependent on walking, biking, and transit use, our bus stops. And we have, you know, very robust uh, bus service in this county between the Fairfax Connector and, and Metrobus. So for, for years, decades even, we have been focusing our uh, sidewalk improvements and our bus stop improvements in these uh, equity communities, um, such as you know Columbia Pike, Route One, Route Seven, so on and so forth, and the the data that we have now uh, pulled out in the Active Fairfax Plan uh, literally shows that that there is a disproportionate impact in the number of pedestrian crashes in these equity emphasis areas. So we've mapped out these um, equity areas down to. Um, Little tiny hexagons, probably you know, I don't know, two, two, three hundred hexagons that that cover the, the the county. And when you map out those crashes uh, in those equity needs areas, um, the highest percentage of, of crashes is happening disproportionately in these equity needs areas. And so you know, we knew that, but we now have the data to back that up. So um, okay, that's the only slide on this one. So. <laughs> that's what that's what I can tell you uh, from from my staff uh, perspective and involvement of, of crash data. Um, we 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 know uh, the one other thing that we have as a tool, and you all should uh, feel free to explore this. Is the VDOT did do uh, something called the Pedestrian Safety Action Plan. PSAP is the acronym. And uh, we can we can send you all a link to that. I've, I've asked Laura to be <laughs> taking notes on the on the things that we're committing to. Uh, the VDOT Pedestrian Safety Action Plan was actually a very strong statewide effort at identifying pedestrian safety uh, crashes, uh, clusters, and corridors uh, throughout the entire state, um, with a with a, a goal towards identifying not only the locations but recommending countermeasures. So there's a, an excellent map that's out there. It's a, it's a heat map of um, pedestrian crashes. And um, that is uh, probably, if, if you want a snapshot of, uh, of the pedestrian data without getting specific data from the police, uh, that's readily available tonight. Uh, and you can, Google, you can just Google it, but we, we can send it out to you. Uh, and it, 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 it absolutely does highlight, again, what we already knew to some extent that there are uh, these corridors of significance, but other, other places pop out, um, such as Blake Lane, which has been a, um, a subject of some recent community. Um, has joined interest. the meeting. Um, so we, in, in looking at that data, all of a sudden we saw Blake Lane and by all of a sudden, again, I. I have a perspective of, of many years of working on this. You know, 15 years ago, Blake Lane was not um, a, a hot spot, but but it is now because of um, 
populations and, and, and traffic. So uh, that's a that's a tool that you can look at right now uh, to see uh, the, the state of pedestrian crashes in the county. And, and VDOT, VDOT should be commended for that because it's a statewide tool that all the jurisdictions that, that may not have the resources of a Fairfax uh, can also use to, 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 to look at things. But with that, I'll, I'll open up discussion. I had one. Uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. Which commissioner wasn't wanting to speak, sir? I'll make a comment going. after you, Mike, or whoever else wanted to comment. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Well, just uh, um, wanted to ask. Uh, uh, I understand there's the towards zero deaths program in the county. Um, are you working with them, or what connection, if any, is there between some of the stuff that we talked about here with the? Uh, uh, you know, the crashes and things like that and, and, and that activity, you know, the, uh, the weekly uh, um, report and things like that. Sorry, your, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, um, accident data and all that, sorry. Sure, uh, that's a great question. Um, there's two um, uh, <laughs> branded efforts out there in the United States about uh, fatalities. One is vision zero and the other is towards zero deaths. Uh, here in the DC area, the District of Columbia and Alexandria, for instance, uh, they they've uh, embraced the the Vision Zero, and the Vision Zero is exactly as as uh, it sounds, a vision where there will be zero fatalities. That that's a European uh, effort. It began in the Scandi Scandinavian countries, and it really encompasses um, three major uh, um, uh, solution approaches. Engineering solutions that our roads, our infrastructure should um, anticipate that humans will make mistakes and that our uh, infrastructure should um, be uh, uh, built, designed, and built in a way to uh, keep us from getting killed when we make mistakes. Uh, also, uh, our vehicles, the European approach is very strong, much stronger than America's on uh, vehicles. That uh, also should uh, protect vulnerable road users, such as pedestrians. So all of the technology that you see in some American vehicles today, such as pedestrian detection, um, and there's even vehicles that have hoods with airbags or hoods that can pop up and provide a, a, a cushioning um, uh, in, a, in a crash. Uh, that's all come from the European uh, Vision Zero, and then. Uh, Lastly, and probably the most important um, part of the European Vision Zero approach is culture. The, the culture that um, um, the most vulnerable road users uh, have to be protected. And, and by culture, that uh, really means the, law, the laws. Um, the laws in Europe are significantly different than America when it comes to uh, the driver's responsibilities to protect vulnerable road users. So that's that's um, Vision Zero is a, a good 20 or 30 years old at this point uh, in, in uh, the Scandinavian part of Europe and has um, is been um, embraced uh, here in America. Um, in Virginia, the Virginia Office of Highway Safety, I believe, which is a, um, a, a of an agency uh, under the governor's office, uh, they've uh, embraced the term uh, towards zero deaths. And it, again, it's essentially the same concept that um, we should do all of these things, engineering, um, cult culture, um, uh, that would lead us towards zero deaths. Um, the uh, challenge has been, um, on the one hand, you know, uh, it seems like a, a no brainer, right? That, um, everyone should support, you know, zero deaths. Uh, the challenge has been, um, it's, it's, um, hard to achieve that. It's hard to, um, make all those changes. Uh, uh, and so, uh, governments. Uh, have been criticized for um, embracing the idea and and not doing enough either immediately or ever or <laughs> over the years 
to to accomplish that. And you know, um, the reality is, of course, you know, America's road systems uh, road system has been a hundred years in the making, and it's been a hundred years in the making uh, uh, focused on vehicle movement. And so, to undo that and to change that focus uh, for the vulnerable road users is is not a small task. And so. Um, uh, our our board, for instance, has asked what's the difference between those two, and um, you know uh, ha has expressed an interest in it. Uh, however, probably our biggest challenge in that regard is that we don't um, own our roads, and so most of the traditional tools um, are not directly available to us because uh, VDOT controls our roads. Okay, all right. Well, appreciate that. Appreciate that. Uh, Alexis, I, did I interrupt the question? Sorry, did I interrupt a question you were going to ask? Or yeah, I was going to ask uh, Chris. Uh, he said that these data are agglomerated all the way up to the federal level. Are are the data compatible with one another? So if I wanted to compare data with uh, Montgomery County, Maryland, or Carson City, Nevada, could, could I do that? Are there variations in the way they're collected? The way they're going right. uh, that's a good question. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly familiar with what goes on around the region, uh, but yeah, when the, when the federal uh, structure was put into place, uh, that you would think should lead to be able to, to compare uh, jurisdictions around the United States. Uh, you know, from our perspective, uh, one of the things that I certainly consider is our population. And our exposure risk mm -hmm. that it's that last part that's a little harder to to wrap around it. You know, I can easily divide our our fatalities and our crashes by our population and. Uh, because our population is increasing and our uh, fatalities and crashes are statistically uh, relatively stable, although uh, still unacceptable. Um, as our population increases, you could you could say that the rate of pedestrian crashes is actually decreasing. Uh, what what you can't capture as easily is the exposure risk, and by exposure risk, the more people that are walking and biking, the less people who are driving a car, well, then the more people who are out there in a crosswalk along the side of a road, and they, therefore they have more exposure risk. So we know that. Uh, in, over the past 20 years, there are absolutely more people walking and biking, both for equity reasons, because uh, they they don't have a choice and they need to, but also for um, other reasons like the environment or uh, pleasure or you know now the pandemic where, where people are walking and biking more. So that's what complicates data comparison, in, in my opinion, as staff, that, I mean, I know that this past year there has been way more uh, people walking and biking than, than ever before. Uh, and so that's, but it's our population didn't change you know, significantly. So that's, that's the harder thing to capture in the, in the traffic engineering world. It's the exposure risk that is increasing. Uh, and so luckily, um, thank, thankfully, our, our crash rate is not increasing with that increased number of pedestrians and, and bicycles. Okay. okay, thank you. Um, I, I do want to make one uh, uh, sort of plug right now while we're here on the topic of crash safety and things like that. Um, I did, uh, Calvin was kind enough to forward to the TAC a collision analysis uh, a webinar uh, taking place tomorrow. Uh, Chris, I don't know. Were you were you able to see that? Did he were you able to get that as well? Um, you might know about it already, but it certainly seems like something that you might be interested in if you uh, haven't heard about it. They're talking about things they've done in, in Portland, Oregon. Uh, no, actually, I did not catch that myself. But um, okay. I'll, I can. We'll make, sure, can... we'll make sure you get that. We'll make sure you get that. Just want, I, I wanted to make sure we we raise it now because I thought that's something that might be of interest to you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Um, I do want to keep moving through the uh, through the slides. Um, any other burning questions before we move on to the to the next one here? We're about halfway through, and we need to pick up the pace just a teeny bit. 
Okay, so the next uh, area is public private spaces. And so, um, you know, th uh, this is a great question also, and it's it's a, a good educational piece for, again, uh, the new commissioners and the new board members. So, uh, most uh, two of our most famous um, uh, uh, pedestrian friendly developments are private property, Reston Town Center and the Mosaic District. And um, the developers uh, like the idea of um, private streets and private property because they can do what they want. They don't have to um, uh, uh, obey VDOT rules. Uh, the problem is they can do what they want. And so as a county, we we have to um, uh, sort of weigh the, the pros and the cons of that because uh, we want to be able to provide bus service. We, we don't want them closing the streets arbitrarily and things like that. So we actually have a preference for public streets uh, for, for the streets, but we certainly understand, you know, the, the um, infrastructure issues and, and things like that. The developers are, are talking about when it comes to public and private spaces. So um, that's an important uh, differentiation to, to be aware of because there's again, there's pros and cons. Um, you know, can you make a 15 mile an hour speed limit? Can you uh, do things that we can't do on a VDOT road? You know, that's that might be better for for pedestrian safety, but um, you know, all, all of these as, aspects can be complicated. So, uh, in this case, it was brought to our attention from your guys' presentation that there was a, a bicycle parking issue, and, and I, I have to be honest, I would have never. Recognize these as bike racks myself, um, <laughs> but uh, apparently they are. And so uh, we 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 uh, we discussed internally this, and uh, at a minimum, we would suggest this. It would probably be helpful to have a sign that says that this is bicycle parking. Uh, and um, the the issue uh, that was brought to us was that uh, uh, apparently they were interpreting that it's uh, private or that they have some sort of managed use of the bicycle parking. So not only would I not know that that's bicycle parking, but if it's if there's some sort of managed use, residents only, uh, that um, there ought to be a sign. And, and lastly, um, uh, outside bicycle parking like this, um, the, the industry standard and the inference is that it's for visitors, uh, residents, or, or uh, businesses have their own bike parking inside the parking garage somewhere. So, um, tip, you know, this is not where if you lived in some high rise, this is not where you would live your leave your bike. Um, this is where your visitor would arrive and leave their bike. Your bike would be in some secure, dedicated space uh, for residents or or for employees. So, um, so. Uh, that being said, um, this is somewhat similar to the discussion we had earlier about um, uh, shopping centers. Um, these are private properties, and so our our ability to uh, tell them what to do, so to speak, is limited. Uh, we can certainly contact them and 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 make a complaint that hey, you know, this doesn't seem right. Uh, but ultimately, uh, it, these are private properties. So just like uh, a townhouse neighborhood can tow cars uh, that are parked illegally, whereas on public streets, the county cannot. Um, that's the difference between public and, and private property. So I know we talked, uh, I'll scroll down here. I know we did talk about uh, some of these issues with uh, bicycle parking, and I think these are more general. Uh, when it comes to uh, how we require bicycle parking, uh, what what we can and cannot do, uh, the recommendation is, you know, what what are the best ways to uh, address these? Uh, are there land use recommendations, incentives? Um, I think uh, when Nicole meant, uh, was shown this uh, these pictures before on the uh, on the Comstock site here, you know. We would expect that that was just a misunderstanding and that uh, a simple discussion with them could clear up that misunderstanding. But if not, then they need to put up a sign that says whatever, you know, whatever the rule is. So. What is your experience in uh, 
a neighborhood like Mosaic, where you're, you're likely to have more bicycle riders. Uh, is there a demand from landowners to put in bicycle parking? I mean, you've got restaurants and supermarkets and health clubs, blah, 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 blah. And people will ride to those things. It, it seems to me that it would, the, the merchants would want to make it convenient for the customers. I mean, and that's mosaic. That's a, a recent development that's more bike and pedestrian friendly than a lot of other places in the county. You had any experience with that at all? This is Tom. Maybe I'll give Chris a break here, but <laughs> yes, and and Mosaic, um, Mosaic definitely um, has been cooperative. They have put in bike parking, um, and they've they've encouraged that. Um, I wouldn't say every development has has been as equally as um, supportive, but but Mosaic in particular has been. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, in terms of these these questions in this recommendation here, um, some of these things, yes, definitely would be discussed in the um, the active Fairfax plan. If there is a proffer to provide bike parking and the 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 company is not doing that, the landowner is not doing that, then we do have some enforcement. But as we said earlier, there's a lot of um, older development. And that that doesn't have it. And I know we talked um, a little bit about incentives, and so that may be something that could be um, considered. Um, if they aren't meeting their proffer, then yes, we can go in and, and we can, um, you know, potentially, uh, you know, first start off by, you know, telling them, hey, you're not meeting your proffer. If they continue, there may be penalties that are associated with that. But there aren't any overall penalties that the the a code would allow us to impose on things like not having bike parking unless they've been through the zoning ordinance and they, they've got proffers and then we have some tools there okay um i think probably i think there's the the final topic i think probably in these, in these last three slides yeah, and I, let me just add one more thing real quick to a uh, full full picture here. Uh, there are also uh, developers that are still hostile to, to bicyclists, and, and and they don't they don't see that um, customer benefit yet. You know, of course, you, you're all probably familiar with the traditional uh, no skateboards, and no, no bicycles. You know that kind of uh, mentality, and so. Uh, you know, we think that's changing. We, you know, we again, Nicole works with uh, with uh, uh, a lot of commercial properties, a lot. But you know, there are definitely still some that that uh, that don't get it, and so the commissioner should should be aware that that is, you know, un unfortunately still an evolving perspective uh, in in the business community. But one that you know, if if businesses start thinking about you know uh, their their bottom line. Uh, you know, um, all, all customers are good customers, and in particular, uh, the the research shows that bicycle customers uh, tend to spend more because they are um, uh, their perspective on a bicycle uh, is not going by at 50 miles an hour on a car uh, in a car. They're uh, actually um, uh, more engaged with the with the businesses at the local level. Okay, point point taken. Yes. Now, this is where we get into a little bit about the, uh, the, the, the police. And I think we're some work here that we can do here. I, I don't think we're ready to sort of reach out to the police. That said, uh, it is an important issue and want to get your perspective on that, that enforcement uh, uh, mechanism here. So. Sure. So, um, uh, thank you again. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep turning my camera off for bandwidth issues. So. Um, uh, I think this is, yeah, uh, you got a couple slides here. So, uh, one of the concerns is, you know, how, how enforcement occurs. Um, we, uh, as, a, as FCDOT, when we installed the yield to pedestrian 100 to $500 fine signs, uh, many years ago now, 
uh, we actually uh, were asked this question by the Board of Supervisors and we had the police report out on how they enforced it and the answer was very positive. Uh, they had they had been enforcing it and the signs actually helped because uh, the police have always told us that regulatory signs, uh, which are uh, uh, signs with the white background and the black letters, uh, those uh, help them uh, with the judicial system that the judges uh, <laughs> don't don't let the, the drivers give many excuses if there's a sign that says this is the law and now you break the law. Um, uh, when it comes to the details, though, of, of enforcement and, and, you know, how, how enforcement is done and, and what the outcomes are, that is actually something that uh, is probably a subject that we should invite the police uh, to come uh, to the TAC at some point to discuss. Uh, timing wise, we, of course, have a new chief of police now, so um, it's probably a time in our of course, policing in America in general is uh, probably in a time of transition. Uh, but uh, when it comes to this um, specific issue of um, of enforcement, uh, the timing is probably a, a good time for the new uh, board members and the commissioners to engage the police on 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 their approach to uh, enforcement. Um, the the law um, has been strengthened. Uh, recently, uh, for many years, the, the law was just yield to pedestrian, but now, uh, as been shown in this slide here, the language has been strengthened to say that a driver shall remain stopped, or shall stop and remain stopped. And that's um, that's been a 10 to 15 year effort by Fairfax County and uh, some of our other uh, urban jurisdictions in the state, particularly the Richmond area and the Hampton Roads area, to just simply make that change from yield to stop. And so that that's an improvement. Uh, there's also the uh, vulnerable. Um, there's the um, the uh, line B at the bottom here. Here, that's right. I can move my mouse around. Uh, line line B at the bottom there, where an, an overtaking vehicle uh, should not pass a, a stop vehicle. That was not uh, previously in the law. And there's also been a strengthening to the vulnerable uh, road road user uh, law. Um, the uh, handheld personal commu communication devices. Um, uh, Tom and I were part of the uh, uh, Hunter Mill Transportation Group meeting where the Hunter Mill uh, police came out and and talked to us about that, and that that is now a, a primary offense, and uh, they can um, they can enforce it better than they could before. Uh, the question was asked if I'm stopped at a red light, can I can I use my cell phone? And the answer was yes, but when the light turns green, you better not be sitting there uh, on your cell phone and stopped in traffic because now, now you violated the law. So um, again, that this is, you know, my my experience and what what um, what I've um, been involved with with the police over the years is the question of is there enforcement and the answer is that yes uh, each of the each of the police districts conduct annual enforcement efforts um, and it's not just targeted at um, at pedestrians or bicyclists it's typically balanced uh, targeting drivers and, and pedestrians uh, however there is probably some historical bias in um, in uh, accepting driver behavior that uh, can be a risk to vulnerable road users. So that is still uh, a subject that is worth discussing. The one other thing I should mention is the jaywalking law. Uh, the jaywalking law was actually made, I'm not even sure how to explain it legally. It's, it's no longer enforceable because jaywalking was uh, unfortunately used in, in parts of the United States and in parts of Virginia um, uh, inequitably in um, enforcement uh, of targeting cer certain racial groups. And so, um, whereas previously Virginia 
actually allowed jaywalking. Uh, the law was that it was not illegal to cross uh, mid block if a crosswalk was not nearby. Uh, but that specifically was changed uh, by the most recent General Assembly uh, because it had unfortunately been used in, in some parts uh, as um, uh, a racial profiling um, uh, pretext uh, for um, uh, encountering people. And so um, from a pedestrian safety point of view, that uh, seems to be unfortunate because uh, we actually certainly don't want to encourage um, uh, pedestrian behavior that puts pedestrians at risk, but certainly from a historical perspective of, um, of uh, racial inequities uh, in, in um, America and in governments, uh, it's understandable uh, that if this is a tool or, or something that is perceived as um, a pretext for uh, inequitable enforcement, that the General Assembly would take this action. So um, that's my sh short version. And Tom, if you want to add anything, but again, I, I would suggest we invite uh, the police. And once the once the new chief gets uh, a chance to get his 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 seat warm, uh, to consider some of these things and come to the TAC. Yeah, and I, I guess I would just jump in on that. Is if the TAC would like to to talk about enforcement, we can we can work to arrange a time, and have uh, have the police department come and talk about that. As Chris mentioned, there is they they, they do have a presentation. Um, he and I saw it at the Hunter Hunter Mill um, Transportation Advisory Commission uh, or committee meeting uh, a couple weeks ago. So they could they could bring that and um, and walk you through what they've been doing for enforcement. So that's probably the best way to handle that, Mr. Chairman, uh, since Chris neither Chris or I are yeah. Uh, yeah. directly involved in the enforcement aspect of this. Who gives that presentation? I mean, is it the chief or is it somebody else on this uh, in the force? Uh, the presentation we heard was given by the um, one of the officers from the Hunter Mill um, station. Okay. But it's available. We could, we could probably get any number of people to probably come in, and uh, present that. Okay. We, we work with their traffic probably safety division. Yeah. Um, would and be. and they've also put out a, a piece recently on on some of the other laws in the in the Blake Lane. Uh, uh, that their office of public affairs had put together a, a YouTube video. On, on some of the changes of, of laws, so there, you know, there's there is some uh, recent information that's uh, available. Okay. Well, one of the things that I know we'd be interested in is the nexus between that and the safety part of you know phase of you know one A <laughs> or two of of, of your activity. Um, so appreciate that, you know, Tom. That's that's a good suggestion. We'll certainly. Uh, uh, keep that in mind there. So, um, okay. Uh, well, I think we've we've gone through the brief. We've answered questions. Although I guess uh, I'll, I'll ask uh, uh, um, uh, Alexis and Kelly if the questions that you raised are, have, are sufficiently answered. If there's any other questions you want to raise before we uh, uh, move on to the next part of the agenda. Late, let's wrap up. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, well, um, what I, uh, uh, we're going, what we're going to do now is move on to the uh, consideration of a possible uh, uh, resolution in support of the activities here and to encourage the board to take some actions. That said, that's what the TAC will be discussing. Um, of course, Tom, uh, uh, Chris, you're, you're, you're welcome to stay with us. In fact, one of the things I'd like to ask first is uh, from a factual perspective. Uh, I hope we had a chance to look at the uh, the resolution there. If there's any inaccurate or misleading statements we have in there, uh, recognize it's our role to decide what to say. But certainly on the facts part, there we want to make sure that we are uh, well grounded with uh, with what we said, particularly the taxes there. I'm not hearing anything. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I, I don't think we've had a chance to look at it. Um, we may have it, but I would say that <clears throat> neither one of us have had a chance to look at it. So 
Um, I don't think we can answer that question for you in terms of factual, but we certainly can look at it and, and give you some feedback. Um, okay. But I, I don't have an answer for you tonight. Okay. Um, okay. Well, the problem we've got is if we're going to pass a resolution uh, prior to the consideration uh, or the, the presentation, the board transportation committee. We're going to have to. Uh, we're going to have to uh, pass it tonight. Um, and so. And, and that's that's fine. Um, mm -hmm. I just I don't have having not reviewed it. I can't I tell you if there's any factual problems with it. But I, yeah. I don't have any issue with you. You know, um, deliberating and 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 approving a recommendation to the board. Well, one thing we can certainly do um, is take whatever action we want to take on the resolution. Um, I've tried to be fairly generic with the whereas is, um, but if it turns out there are some uh, um, uh, uh, errors in there, perhaps we can ask the permission for the tag if we do pass a resolution uh, to make what they call in legislative parlance technical and conforming changes to the resolution to make sure that it, that it is in fact accurate. So Tom, we can we can sort of give you more time to do that. Um, and so, uh, uh, what I'd like to do is, uh, we, we, there's two ways we can proceed. Certainly, uh, uh, under a motion to uh, uh, to review the, the resolution. What I'd like to do to start is just uh, uh, solicit views of the uh, the commissioners to see if there are, uh, if there's an interest in in discussing the resolution. Uh, yes, we have one in front of us, um, and if so, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, to pick up this resolution, see if we want to what we want to do with it. Uh, so, any opposition to discussing this then? <laughs> yes. Hi, okay, uh, there we go. You know, I, I read the resolution as I think I wrote to you and Cal, and it's innocuous. Um, you know, everything we touch, I think we think is good. And um, uh, this is going to come before the Board of Supervisors, whether we have a resolution or not. I just wonder if it just clutters up their inbox. If they, yeah, all right, it's a feel good resolution, and and um, yeah, but does it really, you know, will it accomplish anything more than that? If it does, I, I have no problem voting for it. But I just, I, I just don't want to clutter up their inbox if, if, um, if it's not necessary. Sure, uh, that that's legitimate, absolutely. Um, other other perspectives, perhaps. I got one. Uh, yes. The, uh, I have no problem cluttering up anybody's inbox if it gets across. Um, I, I, I read read it. I think it looks good. Don't I have some? I guess technical. Uh, edits technical and conforming changes. Um, not not factual, but just the way it's written. Um, oh. um, I would change a couple of the words, the wording around. Uh, but otherwise, I think it's a pretty good resolution. Okay. We certainly will have the opportunity to uh, to make some edits to the resolution if we if we want to go forward with it. So that uh, that's easy to do, Pete. Yeah. Um, it's it's just wording. Okay. All right. Um, what I will uh, uh, say uh, regarding the the resolution and, and and Kevin, you're right. I think that uh, uh, we don't want to uh, um, flutter flutter up inboxes. Uh, but I don't think the TAC has certainly been doing that recently. I can't remember the last time we passed a resolution. We have done so, of course, in the past, but I can't remember the last time. Uh, certainly not in the past year or so. Um, so uh, I think that uh, uh, it's not like we're speaking up on things, you know, all the time. But I do think, though, that the Act of Fairfax plan is, is, is very important. Obviously, you know, the safety aspects here are, are, are very important. I argue that um, the the final uh, resolution uh, is of some consequence because what we're doing, uh, uh, if adopted, would be encourage the board to continue with support for the project and direct FC dot to to execute phase two. Now, one of the things that I think we ought to talk about a little bit is the safety piece and the phase two piece. Um, you know, because right now there's that little sort of hint and chat a little bit <laughs> about the safety piece. That was going to be in phase one is not right now. We can work out the language there, but certainly what we're suggesting here to the board is we think that the work so far is 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 good. And yes, we are blessed to often see, always see, 
good work from FCA. Now, there's no exception here. What we're doing uh, is suggesting in this case that the board continue that activity. I did not say provide funding, but obviously you've got to have funding to do something like that. Um, and what it does is it uh, um, allows uh, FC dot uh, 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 in whatever way they, they 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 see fit, and we will of course pass the resolution on to the board so they know about it. Um, to to uh, to say that uh, um, the independent advisory group, the citizens advisory group, does believe this is this is worth continuing, and I think that's important to say uh, because there are some things we talk we've been talking much of the evening about safety activities that are in phase 1A, phase two, these are all gonna be important issues um, and really would like to be able to, uh, to dive more deeply into these into these issues here and encourage the board to keep the keep the keep keep this process going and, and not short circuit it. Hey guys, this is Linda. Um, yes. Just to give my input, um, I know during our, our work study group meeting uh, a week, two weeks ago, whenever it was, I was in support of the resolution then and I still am because you know, if we take a step back and look at the tax role, you know, our our job is to advise the board on transportation related policies and issues, and I think that this resolution is doing just that. You know, to to Mike's point, you know, giving them our our advice, which is that we support, um, you know, we support the subject at hand, and we agree, or we we believe rather, we feel that it is important enough. For us to do this, which to Mike's point is not something that we've historically done. Thank you, Linda. Appreciate it. Um, uh, uh, other views, um, pro or con, or something in the middle. <laughs> um, motion to proceed. Uh, uh, well, I think the motion would be is to uh, uh, to consider the resolution. Um, and then during the discussion of the resolution, now I'm not a Robert's rules expert because I know we're going to want to make some edits here. Um, and so what we can do perhaps is make the edits here in regular session. And once we're comfortable with the changes, then we can move to uh, consider that resolution. I'm happy to do that way. I think it's a little, it's a little less confusing for me, but, um, if there's some, if there's a, if there's a stickler for Robert's rules, then, uh, raise your hand and let us know how to proceed. Otherwise I just rather go informally if that's okay. And this was one of the this was the reason I, you know we, we wrote it down before so that we could see it and we wouldn't just be creating it on the spot and what did you say i can't remember that word so with that uh uh pete if you, if you have uh, some suggested edits please uh, uh let us know what would you like to see changed okay it's uh nothing substantial it's just formatting mm -hmm. frank okay. frankly um let, let me see it okay uh, and, and just a matter of style um and the whereas is I would label every one of them as whereas. You don't say and whereas. You actually, at the, at the end of each line, like line number two, where it talks about to achieve the above goals, comma, and you put the word and in a colon. And then it flows on to the next whereas. Okay. And, and you keep adding a and and a colon on each one until you get to the last one where you just put a period. And I think it's an and semicolon if we're to be yeah, specific. Yeah, semicolon. Yeah. Gotcha. semicolon. Okay. Can do. You're right. You're right. And therefore, be it resolved, uh, take the word that out. <laughs> okay. Um, and frankly, uh, I would. That's the formatting changes I would make, unless you wanted to make each therefore be a, its own stand standalone. But I think the way you did it is fine. Okay. Um, Unless you you also do the same as we um, suggest on the whereas is and that uh, first therefore committee and semicolon second one and funding prior prior, prior I can't read it now prior, anyway something about okay. funding and, and colon and so just just those four okay. main changes we do that okay those are so my we'll suggestions and, and semicolons yep okay. Can do. Just formatting. That's it. Okay. All right. I had a question about um, yes. that. I and we just for the record support support this. I think it's. I think we should be putting this forward. So thank you for drafting it. Um, on the last, whereas my question was, um, there, there need to be a comp. 
what additional work can be accomplished in phase two to develop an execution strategy? Is phase two an execution strategy? Is that is that the right term? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, what I was getting at was the the implementation. Maybe implementation is a better word. Um, and you know, as, as Tom has acknowledged, he's not had a chance to look at this. It was one of the things that uh, we hope that he could help us with the, with the language there. But actually, Tom, not to put you on the spot, and certainly you can continue to review this as we discussed. But um, which do you think would be the most appropriate usage? And typically, we would use the word implementation. I think okay. that's. Phase two will include an implementation plan. So, okay. that, Implement, that implementation plan or implementation strategy? Strategy, either one is fine, but would typically we would use the word implementation. Normal plan? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, Jeremy. That's a good point. And, and one thing I did want to uh, 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 talk about a little bit here, you know, when we look at the second res resolved, we talk about um, phase two addressing the areas of need and demand, and these are some things we talked about on, on May the fourth, making sure that uh, we you know we get some more information. There was some very good information and that was sort of uh, kind of a teaser there of sorts of some things we wanted to look more at, you know, the safety, education, economic impacts, etc. Um, what I'm wondering about is that division between sort of phase one and phase two because that safety stuff is kind of hanging out a little bit. It's it's sort of phase one, but not exactly, but it's not really phase two. Um, you know, Chris, how, how are you guys going to characterize that to the board when you talk to them next week? Is this all phase ones or just the, the vision and goals kind of thing? Or how are you going to uh, frame that? Uh, it's it's vision and goals. Uh, I'm okay. sorry. Can you hear and see me? Yeah. Yes. No. Um, so uh, <laughs> the, 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 re the, the real answer or the silly answer is that we're limited to 10 slides uh, on a presentation. And so um we have the need to focus the attention on the vision and goals which are completed uh -huh. and the the safety element is not completed yet so uh due due to the 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 boards uh needing to be briefed on other issues yep. there's you know four or five presentations for each board transportation committee and so we're limited to the amount of uh of information we can bring um at, at in, in a single presentation uh, we're going to go with the vision and goals uh, for the May 25th, and then we'll come back uh, on June 29th for a discussion on, on the safety elements. And so, okay. Well, would it be accurate or would it not be inaccurate to characterize the safety activities as in phase two? Um, the reason is that, and, and, and we're, you're presenting sort of phase one or part of phase one on the 25th. Is the board expecting you to come back later with safety and that's still part of phase one, then we go to phase two? Or it's still part of phase one. It's, it's still, still part of part phase one. Of phase one. Okay. And as Chris said, we're planning to bring it back on um, June 29th. So it'll be a month behind it, but it's still part of phase one. Okay. And it's part it's part of what's funded and, and we're advancing right now. Um let me just ask the question this way, straight up. Should this resolution be deferred until the, the June meeting? So you take it with you when you do the safety stuff as well. I mean, you know. I, I think we could go either way with it. Um, you know, if you, first of all, I, I would say that I, I support the TAC weighing in on the plan. So I Thank think you. that it is appropriate for you to provide feedback to the board on the plan. Um, whether you do that um, for the meeting coming up on, on the 25th next week, or you wait and do it as part of the June 29th meeting, it would still be before the board takes action. We do anticipate um, act, the board act, acting on the vision and goals and the safety plan, either the end of July or maybe early September. So. Um, if you wanted to wait until the, your June meeting to adopt something, that would give you an opportunity to take a look at the safety plan or, or the material that we'll be working on. But um, either way, I think works. Okay. All right. Um, to tell you the truth, I would, you know, we, we're, you know, we're at a crescendo here. We've been working on it. We're, we've got everybody's attention. I'd like to go forward if we're, if we're, if we're comfortable. 
Um, you know, the, the uh, second whereas talks about providing special funding for phase one to define the vision and goals. Should I add a reference, a reference to safety or would it, or is it fine just to say vision and goals? That's the third whereas. Well, we, we don't actually need any funding for phase one. We have enough funding right. to right. complete phase one. So I'm not really sure. No, what I, the re, Tom, the, re, the question I'm asking is what I'm characterizing is I said the board provided special funding provided for phase funding. one. Should I also mention safety there or is vision goals going to cover all of the things that you're being expected to discuss with the board in, in two, in two bites? You can mention safety there because it's right. part of what they provided funding for. Okay. Um, okay. Vision goals and safety, something. Okay. That was phase two. All right. And you have identified some of the, uh, uh, the, the work that he's done in phase two. So I think that's accurate. So what we're doing here is we were a little bit ahead, obviously, of the, the safety discussion. But we're but we're aware enough of what's happening with safety. We know, um, you know, some additional work. We spent a lot of time tonight talking about it. So um, I think we're we're safe to say um, uh, that you know we're, I, I think we're safe to say we you know, we weigh in now um, and maybe uh, uh, reference the, uh, 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 the the second presentation. What I'm hesitant to do is is trying to make too many changes to the. Uh, to the resolution here, because I'd like to have the resolution be very close to what we actually passed, so that it's it's, it's very clear. I don't want to do too many technical conforming unless we unless we need to. Um, so, I think as I'm looking at the the resolve sections, um, let me see. Now, I do say in the second resolve, uh, phase two should address the areas of need and demand, safety, education. I think you will be addressing safety in phase two. You're obviously also addressing phase one. You'll do more work about safety in phase two. Is that is that accurate? Um, yes, I, th okay. I don't have any issue with how you've okay. worded that. Okay. Um, I, I think we're I think we're we're, we're fine. Uh, you know, in terms of the structure, um, just wanted to make sure that we weren't um, saying something wrong or or, you know, or taking the board in the wrong direction there. Again, Tom, Chris, welcome to uh, make sort of technical conforming changes, particularly on the on the top there. I hope the Mr. Chairman, I, yes, I think sir. the only change that I might suggest uh -huh. is actually in the third bullet is okay. Um, you know, it, the TAC encourages the board to continue to support the active Fairfax project, um, include, and I would suggest including phase two or something like that, um, directing us to. Um, execute phase two without having the funding to do that would be very difficult. So I don't know that you need to say specifically and fund phase two, but mm -hmm. um, you could just say continue to support the active Fairfax project, including phase two and implementation or something along those lines. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, oh, and how about continue uh, support, if you continue to support the active Fairfax project, um, I would say and fund FC dot to execute phase two beginning fall of 2021. And we put funding in that. Are just saying include including phase two and subsequent implementation or something like that, yeah. um, which would include by supporting it, it would include funding. That would be actually a little broader. Yeah. To glad you're here, Tom. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Okay. So here's what I here's what I think I hear you say, Tom. Let me let me uh, say what I've got right now for the third uh, result. The TAC encourages the Board of Supervisors to continue with support the Active Fairfax project, comma, to include the phase two effort beginning in the fall of 2021. That works. Okay, that's one. Well, that sounds good. Um, I didn't want to put funding in there. I'm not afraid of doing it, but I didn't think we needed to. 
I, I don't think you need to. I think that okay. you make the point. Okay. Um, if, are there any other uh, comments, whatever what I would propose to do then is I will read the resolutions I've heard it modified. Um, those of you who have it, hopefully you've got a printed up version you can follow along. And then we'll uh, see if there's any other discussions and then at that point entertain a motion. So are there any other comments about the uh, the resolution before I, I, I read it? Okay. <clears throat> um, whereas Fairfax County has made it a priority to encourage and enable increased walking and biking among your citizens, comma, and semicolon. Whereas the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors directed the Fairfax County Department of Transportation to initiate the active Fairfax project to achieve the, the above goals, comma, and semicolon. Whereas the Board of Supervisors has provided special funding for phase one to define the vision and goals and safety considerations. For the active Fairfax project, uh, which FCDOT will present to the Board of Supervisors Transportation Committee on May 25th, 2021, comma, and semicolon. Whereas FCDOT has identified additional work that will need to be accomplished in phase two to develop an implementation plan for the active Fairfax project, comma, therefore be it resolved, comma, the TAC commends FCDOT for the quality of the work it has prepared for the May 25th phase one presentation to the BUS Transportation Committee, comma, and semicolon. The TAC agrees with FCDOT that phase two should address the areas of need and demand, safety, education, economic impacts, implementation guidance, and funding prioritization, comma, and semicolon. The TAC encourages the Board of Supervisors to continue with support for the active Fairfax project, comma, to include the phase two effort beginning in the fall of 2021. Okay. Two tweaks. Certainly. Um, uh, on therefore be resolved, uh, we move the word that. Mm -hmm. I did. Okay. Did I, so I, thought, I thought I heard you say it again. Yeah. I I uh, I might have. I didn't think I did. Maybe you heard it. But whether no matter what happened, we'll take it out. Okay. Um, okay. I suggest if we pass this tonight, at the bottom you write a line that says that this resolution was passed this date. Doing our regular scheduled meeting and in the day. Okay. I, I think there's probably some uh, official language we should use there, but yes. Topic yeah. by to, whatever whatever standard. Yeah, I'll probably say resolution, and then so yeah, we'll 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 do that. <laughs> okay. Wh whatever whatever the official tweaks are needed. Got you. Uh, we'll we can see there. So yeah, a, a resolution adopted by TAC, um, May 18th, 2021. Yep, and, and based on what you just read, I, I, I move that we approve the resolution as you just read it, uh, subject to um, additional factual and structural edits. Okay. If need be. I mean, if you guys find something, you go, oh my goodness, we're, we're, we're not telling the truth, change it, please. <laughs> yes, yes. So that, that's my motion. Okay. I'll, I'll second it. Well, thank you, Kevin. Appreciate that. Okay, uh, there's a, a motion on the floor to adopt the resolution as modified, allowing the CDOT to make uh, to, to work with the TAC to make technical and conforming changes as necessary. Uh, that motion has been seconded. Uh, any more debate on the motion? Any debate on the motion? Hearing none, we'll move to the vote. All those in favor of the motion, uh, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, at that, the motion passes unanimously by voice vote. And I will note that on the uh, uh, on the motion that it was uh, adopted unanimously um, on uh, May 18, 2021. So, thank you, fellow commissioners, Tom, Chris, uh, Laura, everybody. Uh, we really appreciate everybody uh, uh, coming by and, and, and helping us out here. So. Um, what we'll do here is we'll move up before we move on to public comment. Just any uh, uh, last uh, comments or uh, reattacks uh, from uh, Chris and Tom before we move on to our sort of administrative stuff to uh, uh, finish up the conversation here. Uh, no, again, we thank you for uh, the opportunity to and the focus of the commissioners on this uh, subject that's important to us. Thank you. Thank you.
I also don't have anything else, but wanted to thank you for your time and your input. Well, thank you, and, and Tom, thank you for your support, and uh, and thank you for uh, uh, suggesting that we uh, we take this up and for the special and for the working session. It was very uh, 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 it was very important, very timely. We appreciate you thinking of us, and and uh, glad to be able to help. So thank you. Okay, um, public comment period. Are there any members of the public who would like to uh, uh, speak? Hearing none, let's move on to other business and announcements here. Um, the, uh, 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 the agenda for the TAC meeting uh, still would like to try and have Uber, Lyft, and Via. Uh, was not able to uh, uh, make the arrangements. Excuse me. Uh, 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 with with the uh, the companies for them to try and come, we're going to try it again here in the in this next month. Um, obviously, also we needed to spend some time on the resolution here, and, and so that would be too much to do in, in one night. So, Kevin, we're going to uh, try again, uh, try some other approaches to get the uh, not get the bucks we need here. So that's my proposal for June. Um, you know, if that falls through again, we'll have to look for another topic. Um, we've got a, a, a stable of things we can uh, uh, pick up a look at, but I will ask if there's anything that a uh, particular item that commissioners would like to bring up. Um, you know, please uh, mention it now or raise it with me uh, uh, later on. Uh, certainly, if I'm not able to do the Uber Lyft and Via meeting, we'll uh, we'll announce some time to uh, uh, you know try try and have another uh, another another agenda item there. Okay. Are you thinking anything of a backup, Mike? Did you have a top two of Uber to come through or? Well, um, the short answer is not yet. Um, because I want to uh, uh, tell you the truth, go back to some of the uh, stuff we did for the uh, the offsite. Um, but I will also say that the comprehensive plan directly out of the offsite, um, Active Fairfax, uh, definitely one of the items that we've highlighted uh, uh, in the uh, in the offsite as uh, things we needed to do. Um, I might, I think, when honestly, complete streets might be a good uh, a good topic. Sort of get a. a uh, a presentation, sort of how the county's thinking about complete streets. Um, you know, uh, those are things that uh, sort of uh, jump out at me a little bit. Uh, but that's one of the reasons I'm I'm asking for uh, suggestions is just just to make sure that there's some things that I'm missing or some things that sort of bring it home to your pocket that uh, let us know. What I'll also say is we have talked about having the uh, a meeting with the uh, uh, the transportation agency of our supervisors. Very much want to do that. Would like to do though is be a little bit further along with some of our work plan activities, um, so that we can have them be involved in, in some uh, sort of helping coordinate what we're uh, what we're doing and stuff like that. I'm not sure if we're ready for that by next month. But certainly by July, it's about time to be uh, you know looking at that because we do have our presentation to the board transportation committee on October 25th, I believe. Uh, Mike, I got I got one item that you might want to add in uh, okay. as possible. It's uh, a survey that's being conducted is uh, by the Virginia Department of Rail and Public Transportation. Uh, it is looking at running Metro, either the blue line or the yellow line, all the way down to Quantico. Yes. Uh, and uh, it's just a, it's just a study and it's ongoing. I think the deadline for filling out uh, their online form is probably today, uh, but. The survey is supposed to be report back by, I believe, it's December 1st. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it it has long, if if that actually turns out to be a good survey and they actually get funding for something like that, that would be a real big game changer, at least on the corridor that I live in. Pete, what's the, um, what's sort of the schedule for that? Is there a milestone or an event coming up here soon that uh, we can key off of maybe? Well, the, they have a, the survey started uh, was about a month a month or so ago, and uh, uh, but it's filling out. I think the deadline's the nineteenth to actually fill in the survey. But I'm I'm asking the the gentleman who's in charge of it to engage in some sort of public meeting up here in Northern Virginia. Um, okay, it's with funds that um, uh, the last general assembly uh, actually. Uh, got you know, I think I think it was two million bucks to get this survey done, and, okay. and study, survey and study. Um, um, it's well, pretty so, open. So, Initially, it was started to really look at the blue line, but apparently, as they were discussing it internally, and 
they said, well, why not the yellow line too? And I know back, I think it was 2009 that that was ruled out. Uh, because of all the comprehensive plan changes and everything else, but apparently, at least discussion wise, it's it's on the table. And okay. whether or not, whether or not do anything, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, certainly, you know, thanks for bringing up your attention and and uh, um, you sort of look at it and sort of see what some of the timing is. If it looks like it's something that would be timely for us to look at in June or even July, we can certainly consider doing that. Okay. So let me ask uh, uh, fellow commissioners. Uh, uh, sound like something we'd be interested in in discussing. Uh, so roll, sorry, not several lines. Sorry, Metro to uh, to Quantico. Yeah, it's also you know possible extensions of the BRT down to Potomac Mills and some sort of enhanced BRE. So it's okay. you're looking at a lot of different angles. Okay. okay. All right. Well, keep us posted, and if you see a, uh, uh, a hook there, um, you know, let us please please let me know, um, and so we'll uh, we can we can certainly consider doing that. Well, I think I, I think I sent you an email uh, along those. You lines. might have. So you check, probably check, did. Check your junk mail. <laughs> no, no, it's in my it's in my deleted item. I'm sure Pete said it. <laughs> I'm deleting it. That, okay, that that be good. That that explains it. Yes, exactly. Yes. So, uh, um, okay, I will do that. Mr. Chairman, um, yes, we may have. I, I think there's a good chance that we will have some of the the safety plan related to active Fairfax ready for your review in um, at your June meeting. So you may want to leave a little bit of time to do that. Okay, that's a great idea, Tom. I think appreciate that. Um, you can tell we have a great deal of interest in that. So yes. Okay, so in fact, that's a, a definitely a, 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 a we'll definitely pencil that in. Um, and uh, if we do, if we are able to, we will be able to adjust the uh, the timing accordingly. So, okay. Um, so those that's sort of the uh, the, the the upcoming agenda items there. Um, the uh, the the chair's report. Uh, quite honestly, one of the things I wanted to mention, I, I blurted out sooner about the uh, collision analysis uh, um, webinar that's taking place tomorrow. Uh, Calvin did send that to uh, uh, fellow commissioners. Um, uh, I th I'm not sure if it's too late to sign up or not, but but there it is if you're uh, if you're interested. Um, other than that, I don't have anything specific to uh, to to, uh, to to add right now. Um, you know, I, I was trying to get it's a little bit earlier here, but trying to get us out relatively uh, this is 10 o'clock um, because of the time we spent on the, the work session. I do thank uh, the, the commissioners uh, for coming during the work session. That was uh, very helpful and, and sent strong message of support. And uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for thanks for doing that. So with that, I'll go to commissioners updates. And for that, I'll go through the uh, the roster here. Um, and Roger, I will leave you to last this time, which is you. I'll make you the last person this time because the last person gets the honor of making the motion to adjourn. Uh, normally, Mayor Pauline, but it'll be your opportunity today. So, um, starting at the beginning, uh, um, uh, Commissioner Sperling, any, uh, any reports? Not this evening. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Uh, Mr. Morse. Uh, I don't have anything, but uh, just be careful on the, if we're, if you're going to do safety at the next meeting, uh, you're aware of your time. I, I just don't want that. To, that becomes 3 quarters of the meeting and then if we have Uber, that's only 1 quarter of the meeting. Well, that is true and I will say part of that I thought is 1, maybe a forcing function. To keep us from going too long, and the other is we did spend a lot of time this evening talking about safety as well, and e we're eager to see uh, the safety portion of the plan absolutely. Um, but agreed, Kevin, uh, that uh, we 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 have to be careful that we the meeting not go till eleven o'clock. Um, so actually, uh, um, Chris, as we go forward here, if you're still here, Tom, certainly we can talk to you. As we see the result, it looks like uh, um, it will take all night. Well, maybe we'll we'll carve out the time again. Um, let me ask commissioners while we're on the the topic. We spent a good deal of time on Active Fairfax recently. I have no problem doing that because I know it's an interest item of, of many of you, um, and it's obviously a very important topic. But how would commissioners feel about having another uh, 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 good portion of meeting 
dedicated to active Fairfax. My suspicion is okay, but I, I do want to check to sort of take the temperature of the crowd. Maybe we could move that to a work session. Possible. I mean, we've got enough, enough here to keep us busy for quite a while. And we need to have another pressure relief valve there. Okay. All right. Well, next thing, the uh, next work session in June is June 1 or July 6. Um, okay. Okay. Mr. That's certainly, Chairman, that's certainly yes, sir. We, we won't be ready for June 1st. Um, yeah, I, th I thought the case, yeah. Now, is when do you go to the board transportation committee again? Not that I think June, you could. June 29th. June 29th. Okay. All right. Um, after having just passed a resolution, um, uh, keying off Kevin there, we wouldn't want to fill the board of supervisors inbox with another one. So, um, you know, uh, one of the things we may be able to do um, is do it July 6th or July 20th, maybe after the presentation of the board and tell us how things went and what kind of guidance they, they gave. We'll, we'll leave that up to your judgment in terms of okay. where you all would like to have, have the discussion. Okay. Um, either one would be before the board actually would take action, which wouldn't be until the end of July at the earliest. Okay. So that would be July 27th that the board, the earliest the board would take any action on it. It would be late July, you say that's the earliest? July 27th, yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, that might give us a little bit of a break there, but also a chance if there is something uh, helpful we can do or just to see what happens. So that might make sense to do it, uh, uh, do it in July. Um, either in a work session or in the regular meeting there. So, okay, this is this is good. Thank thank you, uh, uh, Kevin, for uh, uh, for raising the issue. I just don't, you know, I don't want to keep Uber to eleven. They won't be inclined to leave us free vouchers uh, if we keep. Them. <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe Uber Lyft via. We should do that one in person so they can hand out their vouchers. Otherwise, uh, you know, electronic tickets or something. I'm not sure how that works. That's and true. Uh, by the way. We can't accept anything, I'm sure. So I don't want any misunderstandings here. That I think uh, gonna... Okay. Are we getting yeah. closer to in person, by the way? Um, I'm sure we are with the uh, the mask guidance and that. Um, we've got to talk about having an in person meeting again. It's probably about time to think about having an in person meeting again. Um, I know the attraction for many uh, commissioners, uh, uh, myself included, for the convenience of, of doing it this way. Um, so, a uh, long way of saying it's time, I agree, it's time to start thinking about it, about when we get back in person. And hopefully we can Mr. at least Chairman, there, every single one back in person, maybe back and forth, but we'll see. Mr. Chairman, uh, there's yes. likely yes. to be guidance for all the BACs on, on meetings coming up. I don't have a specific date, but I think we're getting very close to getting some universal guidance about um, how to proceed with meetings in the future. The board is going to go back to in-person meetings starting next week, um, and their form of that with committee meetings, and then June eighth will be their bo next board meeting, which will be in person. So, there will be some guidance coming out on that shortly, and we'll get it to you as soon as we get it. Okay. Well, thanks. Um, obviously, we need to follow the guidance. So let's see what the, see what they say. So All right, plenty of time to work on your wardrobe uh, changes for summer. No further comments from Braddock. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, Drainsville, I've said my piece. Um, Hunter Mill District, uh, Commissioner Westenhoff. You're able to dial in, uh, I hope. No, Kelly was having some electronic issues again. Um, Commissioner Hoskin? Uh, I'm going to be attending a meeting of the Bailey's Crossroads Revitalization Corporation on Thursday. I've been very interested in their work. The unfortunate thing is that their meetings were on the third Tuesday of the month. And it looks like they've moved them to the third Thursday of the month. So I look forward to becoming more involved with that organization. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, the end of the line. If so, I'll make a movement to adjourn. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Roger. I made a mistake. Uh, mm -hmm. Another mistake. I went through the list in order. 
I didn't put you at the bottom. So I'll come back to you for the motion to adjourn. I'm sorry. I need to keep going through the uh, commissioners here. Um, oh, oh, sure. Commissioner Sidney. Sorry, just got too excited for nothing. Um, just a short one. I think I mentioned it last time, but um, the, the local uh, committee that I'm working with, the Mount Vernon Council, uh, Transportation Committee, and the National Park Service are, are formalizing a relationship uh, to work on the safety improvements on the George Wash Memorial Parkway. Um, so far, it, the parkway is going to, and this is from the from 495 down to George Washington State. Uh, it's going to be put on a diet uh, from Tulane down to Stratford. There's going to be two lanes heading south, excuse me, two lanes heading north and one lane he heading uh, south. Uh, there'll be improved line of sight by vegetation removed and, and better uh, striping and signage at the intersections. And that all that should be should be occurred before the end of the year. It could go into the next year. But it'll be a multi-year project that considers things like roundabouts and all sorts of other things. Um, so stay tuned. But so far this year, uh, a diet um, and what I mentioned is is going to it's it's a done deal. It's going to happen. Mm. Interesting. Where it goes down to one lane southbound is it currently two or yes. Uh, so any place where there's a, um, a dividing uh, structure. Uh, It'll, it'll remain two lanes and two lanes, but wherever there is not a dividing structure, one of the lanes will be taken for either a left-hand turn or a right-hand turn or for some sort of lane mitigation. Okay. So, and they've, they've already agreed that if it doesn't quite work the way they think it will, uh, we'll address it and change things. But uh, it took us 20 years to get this far, so how quick they'll change it back, who knows? <laughs> No comment. Yes, exactly. Well, it's it's a large federal agency, so but the, yes, that's really, true. Yeah, but they're trying. Uh, they're really listening, and that's a great thing. Fantastic. That is good. That is good. And you know, obviously, keep as posted as you are. Um, it, 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 it 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 definitely sounds like an important project. So, um, okay, uh, Pete, was that it? That's all. Other than okay, thank a good you. meeting. Fantastic. Love to hear that. Um, hope everybody else agrees. Um, Commissioner Glenn. Nothing else for me tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Alexis. Appreciate it. Commissioner Hancock. Nothing for me. Thanks. Thank you, Jeremy. Commissioner Thiel. Fine. Thank you very much. All right. Um, I do not believe we've been joined by Commissioner Skiles or Jones, which leads me back to Secretary Hoskin to, uh, sorry, to Secretary Hoskin to make the expected motion. Adjourn. I move that this meeting be adjourned. I second it. <laughs> all right. There's been a motion to uh, to adjourn and seconded. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 All those opposed, you better not. <laughs> no. Uh, the motion passed unanimously. We are adjourned at 10:13 p.m. Thank you, commissioners, for a good night's work. We all really appreciate it. We'll get the uh, the resolution out and and, and over to. Uh, uh, Jeff Seed on the Board of Supervisors. So thank Thanks. you very much. Good night, everybody. Be safe. Good night. Take care. Good night. Improvement on that. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.